This hearing of the Committee on Civil Service, Government Organization and Professional Regulation joined with the Committee on Finance now called to order. Today, <clears throat> we will discuss the measures proposing to amend or repeal Republic Act number 10912 or the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016. Uh, before we proceed, I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, the members of the committee who are with us today. Of course, my seatmate, uh, Senator uh, Gachalian. Thank you, Pare. Uh, with, the, with the presence of our, of our colleagues, and, and uh, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. We would also like to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons. At uh, tiyak sa, sa ating uh, talakayan ay magiging malawak ito at uh, ngayong umaga sa pamamagitan ng uh, pagbabahagi ng inyong inputs, insights, expertise, and recommendations. May I ask our Committee Secretary, Ms. Jane Arsadon, to, to read and spread into the record the names of the resource persons present and their respective agencies or organizations. Uh, Paki-on lang po yung video at uh, itaas yung kanang kamay habang po kayo nire-recognize. Okay, uh, Jane? Yes, uh, salamat po, Mr. Chair. Um, for the record, we have uh, the committee has invited key government agencies as well as non-government agencies together with the accredited professional organizations and the health uh, groups um, on the part of the government. We have from the Office of the Solicitor General, Solicitor General Jose Calida. On the part of the Professional Regulation Commission, or the PRC, we have Commissioners Teofilo Pilando, Jr., Commissioner Yolanda Reyes, and Commissioner Cueto together with Ms. Bernadette Reyes, CPD Program Manager, Perla Go, Ramil Gabau of the PRC Task Force for the Amendment of CPD Act, Ms. Merli Salvani of the Board of Nursing, Dr. Dumlao also of the Board of Nursing, Ms. Senaida Concepcion Gagno, Ms. Camelita Divina Gracia, also of the Board of Nursing, Mr. Orestes Monzon from the Radiolic, Radiologic Technology, Ms. Nonia Lai Simbre from the PRC, also of its technical CPD, Ms. Regina May de Tanoy. Mr. Nilo Martin, Mr. April Rose Martinez, Ms. Jacqueline Domingo, Ms. Mary Jane O. De Ramos, also of the, the PRC. From the civil service, we have Assistant Commissioner Ariel Ronquillo and Ms. Jane Abelia. For the Department of Education, we have Mr. John Arnold Shena of the DepEd National Educators Academy of the Philippines, or NAAP, together with Mr. Eamon Yantada, also of NAAP. From the Department of Justice, we have Attorney Eduardo Vinuya Jr., State Counsel, together with Attorney Grace Estrada, and Attorney Gisela Mendoza. From the Department of Health, we have Dr. Pretzel Tolentino of the Health Human Resource Development Bureau, together with Ms. Madeline Mabini, Dr. Melinda Garcia, and Mr. Daryl Lance Banes. From the Technological Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, 
we have Noel Cuevas, the chief test specialist for the National Institute for TESD, attorney Don Tayaan of, of its legal division, Ms. Linda Andrade, acting chief test specialist, and Samuel Dacuma. From the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, we have Mr. Peter Carpio of its Legal and Legislative Service. From the Government Service and Insurance System, or GSIS, we have Attorney Lucio Yu Jr., VP of its Legal Group, Attorney Giovanni Lin Kikoy Marin, Mr. Oliver Flores of its Actuary Group, and Ms. Sophia Shock Velasco. I'm sorry, may I also add Mr. Jeffrey Jonathan Reyes, Mr. Raquel de Guzman Buen Salida, Catherine Rose Beringelia, and Ms. Mr. Adriel Jonathan Bonsol. On the part of the non-government groups, we have on the part of the teachers, we have Jocelyn Martinez, President of the Alliance of Concerned Teachers, President of the National Capital Region. Ms. Christina President, Manato, uh, uh, Regional President, Philippine Public School Teachers Association. From the nurses group, we have Melbert Reyes of the Philippine Nurses Association. The part of the autrometry group, we have Dr. Catherine De Mesa, CPD, CPD optometry member, IPAO. On the part of the criminology group, we have Mr. Jerry Canio of the Philippine Criminologies Association of the Philippines. I believe we have Mr. Mr. Gab Michael Gabilo of the Philippine Physical Therapy Association. Your Honor. For those who have not identified, can you please acknowledge yourself for the record? Jane, the good echo time. Yes, sir. We are fixing, sir. Anong yeah. office yung naka-off, naka-on na yan? Yes, sir. Uh, ah, okay, that's it's better. Good. Thank you, Ms. Jane. Um, Republic Act number... By the way, uh, na-recognize ba lahat? Uh, baka meron pa yung dinatawag para ma-recognize. Just uh, raise your hand. So... Ayun, please state your your name, ma'am. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Lagrito, Board of Nursing. Board of Nursing. Good okay. morning po. Good morning, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Take note, Jane. Okay, thank you, Miss Jane. And uh, okay, uh, Republic Act number 10912 or the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016 laps into law on uh, July uh, 21, 2016. It aims to upgrade the practice of uh, professions in the country by uh, instituting measures that will continuously improve the competence of the uh, professionals in accordance with the international standards. This will allow them to contribute in uplifting the general welfare, economic growth, and development of the nation. Sa ilalim ng uh, batas na ito, uh, itinatag at pinalakas ang uh, continuing professional development o CPD programs para sa mga regulated professions and made CPD a uh, mandatory requirement for the renewal of professional license and accreditation system for the practice of uh, professions. Correspondingly, the... Professional Regulation uh, Commission, or PRC, promulgated uh, implementing uh, rules 
and regulations of, of which was approved on February 15, 2017. Subalit, sa mga unang taon pa lamang ng uh, pagpapatupad ng CPD law, ay marami nang naging uh, batikos dito. Ilan sa mga idinadaing ng ating mga professionals ay ang kamahalan ng CPD programs at ng uh, inaccessibility at uh, inconvenience nito, lalo na para sa mga nasa probinsya at mga overseas Filipino workers natin. Apart from this, the difficult uh, requirements, confusing processes, and uh, seemingly impractical uh, application of CPD programs in certain professions added to the burden of our professionals. Bilang pagtugon po, sa mga hinaing at para na rin na uh, ma-integrate ang provisions ng Republic Act Number no. 10968 or the Philippine Qualifications Framework PQF Act na naisa batas noong January 16, 2018 uh, nag-issue ang, ang PRC ng uh, revised RRR ng uh, Republic Act 10912 under PRC Resolution Number 2019-1146 uh, approved on uh, on uh, February 7, 2019. The revised IRR provided for a uh, transition period to alleviate the difficulties of our professionals in complying with the law. Isa sa pinakamahalagang punto na kailangan bigyan diin is the CPD should not be a mere requirement for the renewal of the professional identification card or PIC but an instrument to update update and upgrade the competence uh, competencies of our uh, professionals Mula dito, tignan po natin kung kailangan nating amyandahan o tuluyang i-repeal ang nasabing batas. In so doing, we have to revisit the CPD law to see its necessity, effectiveness, and uh, responsiveness to our current needs. Here in the Senate, six measures were filed and were referred to the Committee on Civil Service. Three of them seeks to amend the law while another three seeks to repeal it. The amendment of uh, RA 10912 is one of the priority legislative measures of this administration. Sa ikalimang uh, State of the Nation address ng Pangulong Duterte last year, inimok niya ang Kongreso na amyandahan ang batas na ito upang hindi mahirapan ng ating mga professionals na mag-attend ng mga seminars para makapag-comply sa kanilang required CPD credit units. Uh, ngayong araw po na ito ay nais nice natin na uh, pakinggan ang uh, panig ng mga stakeholders upang malaman natin kung paano natin tutugunan ang mga panukalang batas na ito. I'm certain that uh, through our rigorous deliberations, we will be able to find a common ground on how to move forward with this piece of legislation. Uh, before we, uh, we proceed with our discussion, I would like to, uh, to ask our colleagues, uh, Senator Villanueva, for your opening statement. As Senator Gachalian. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Senator uh, Revilla, Chair, Mr. Chairman. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, from the onset, um, I am uh, quite uh, sad that um, I cannot provide you quorum because I'm, apparently I'm not a member of your committee. Oh. So, um, I, but I can join as a uh, observer. Uh, no, I've already uh, informed your committee secretary. You're a member of the Finance Committee. So I'm a member of the committee. Finance Committee. Ah, yes, okay. Yes, you're considered. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, part of this, you know. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Chair, for that clarification. Um, uh, and I'm happy to provide you with the necessary forum and also with uh, the necessary voice in this very important topic. Uh, Mr. Chairman, tama tama po itong uh, topic ninyo because uh, personally, I'm getting a lot of mixed signals about CPD. 
may mga professionals na gusto yung CPD, may mga professionals na ayaw ang CPD. No? But the common denominator na naririnig ko, Mr. Chairman, you're right, no? na magastos ang CPD. In fact, even I remember prior to the pandemic, I'm often invited to several uh, CPD activities as a resource person. No? And uh, I observed during that CPD event na may, wala naman problema po yung mga nag-organize. No? I mean, that's their, uh, that's their business. But I, I remember in a three-day CPD affair, kasama na doon yung shopping, kasama na doon yung uh, uh, side trips sa mall, kasama na doon yung side trips sa mga iba-ibang lugar. And uh, the whole CPD event, yung kanilang academic side lang, is actually one or one and a half days. No? Uh, that actually increases the cost. And that became a root cause of uh, a lot of complaints, especially people coming from the outside of Metro Manila. So my point of the matter there, um, it seems to me from my observation that the CPD became a business to some people no? that uh, increased the cost of our um, professionals who are trying to fulfill this mandate. So it's good to take a look at this. Uh, I'm not saying that CPD is unnecessary because may mga kausap nga ako na gusto ang CPD. But I think we have to uh, take this seriously no? and uh, carve out or leave out the commercial aspect of this activity because it really burdens the professionals. Hindi naman lahat po ng professionals ay high-earning professionals. No? May mga professionals na maliit lang naman po yung kanilang kinikita. So it's good to talk about this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, and I, I laud your efforts to uh, put a spotlight on this because it's very important no, uh, in the life of the professionals to, to uh, take this uh, CPD activity. So thank you, Mr. Chair, for uh, uh, this uh, opportunity. Thank you, thank Senator Julian, for sharing your thoughts and uh, initial inputs on this. Uh, I appreciate po namin yun. Uh, thank you, Senator. And uh, for the record, may I ask our committee secretary to first uh, read the Senate bills that are included in our agenda today. Agenda today. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, echo tayo ulit. We can't hear you, Jane. Okay. The following. Okay. The following are the uh, bills pertaining to the amendment or repeal of Republic Act Number 10912, otherwise known as the Continuing Professional Development Law, <coughs> or the CPD. First, Senate Bill Number 267, an act repealing Republic Act Number 10912 otherwise known as the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016, introduced by Senator Ralph Recto. Two, Senate Bill Number 536, an act repealing Republic Act Number 10912, otherwise known as the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016, introduced by Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri. Three, Senate Bill Number 1016, an act amending certain provisions of Republic Act Number 10912, otherwise known as the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016, introduced by the Chair, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. Fourth, Senate Bill Number 1299, an act exempting qualified overseas Filipino workers, OFWs, from the coverage of Republic Act Number 10912, otherwise known as the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016 amending, introduced by Senator Manuel Lito Lapid. Fifth, Senate, Senate Bill Number 1762, an act enhancing the continuing professional development of Filipino workers and professionals, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 10912, otherwise known as the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016, introduced by Sen Senator Joel Villanueva. Lastly, Senate Bill Number 2344, an act repealing Republic Act Number 10912, 
otherwise known as the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016, introduced by Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Comsec. Uh, to put everything in proper pers uh, perspective, uh, we would like to first get an update regarding the implementation of the CPD law from the PRC. I understand that they have uh, actively participated in the technical working group uh, meetings of the Committee on Higher Education in the House of Representatives for the amendments of the said law. Okay, uh, to PRC Chairman Pilando, uh, in your presentation, kindly uh, take into consideration the following. Una po, ang uh, naging problema o challenges sa pagpapatupad ng CPD law. Pangalawa, ang mga naging aksyon ng PRC para dito. Pangatlo, ano ang provision ninyo, uh, opposition ninyo sa mga panukalang uh, i-repeal ang batas at ano-ano ang uh, iminumukahin yung amendments sa CPD law. For an uh, orderly uh, discussion, uh, let us first hear the responses and uh, presentation of PRC and then our colleagues can ask their questions to PRC. After which, we can uh, proceed with the presentations and other resource persons and the questions of the committee members. Okay, uh, PRC? Mr. Chairman Filando, you are now recognized. Mr. Chairman and the honorable members of this committee, uh, we'd like to thank you for this opportunity to discuss the uh, important concerns for the PRC. And with the permission of the chairman, uh, we'll, we prepared a short presentation on, on as a, and, and I think it would be uh, responsive to the advice of the chair. And okay, go ahead, go ahead. You may proceed. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can we allow uh, the, we have a, we designated a, a chair of our a special commission, committee on CPD amendments in the PRC. And can we allow uh, Chair Gabau to do the presentation? Okay, proceed. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Attorney Gabau? Ramil. Attorney Ramil Gabau, you are now recognized. Mr. Chair, wala bang ibang pwede mo present yung ano, presentation ninyo? Mukhang wala pa yata si Attorney Gabaw, baka na traffic. I, I saw him earlier. Mukhang <laughs> <laughs> uh, mahina yata yung signal sa area niya. I'm Attorney... sorry. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, uh, Honorable Senator uh, Bong Rivilla. I'm sorry. Oh, I am okay, not just okay. familiar. I am not just familiar with the platform on how to do the sharing. May request the Secretary of the PRC, Miss April, to do the sharing for me as I uh, go over the presentation. Nasanay po kasi kami sa Zoom, uh, Senator. Hindi kami sa Okay, may proceed, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Bong Revilla, the chairperson for the Civil Service Government Reorganization and uh, Professional Regulation. Of course, my uh, greetings also to Senator Win Kachalian, uh, constituent po ako sa Valenzuela, and uh, to the rest of the members of the committees, uh, joint committees. Uh, please allow me to share the presentation, uh, Honorable Senator Bong, uh, of the Professional Regulation Commission. <coughs> and the 46 professional regulatory boards uh, under its supervision, including the PRB's respective APOS and IPOS. Uh, uh, next slide, uh, Ms. April. The Professional Regulation Commission conducted its own consultations on this matter. Uh, the result is clear and unanimous. Uh, professionals who are in favor or those who have doubts agreed that CPD is necessary for professionals. And so we believe that Filipino professionals and the Philippines as a member of the community of nations need the continuing professional development. Uh, Honorable Senator Revilla, may I just run through some of the legal basis why we really have to have CPD. Uh, 
Section 14 of uh, Article 12 of the Philippine Constitution on National Economy and Patrimony provides uh, that the sustained development of reservoir of national talents consisting of Filipino scientists and professionals for that matter uh, should be promoted by the state. That's uh, our constitutional basis. And for that reason, uh, RA number 8981 was enacted into law in year 2000, modernizing the PRC, your honors. And section two of that law, uh, section two of that law declares the state policy uh, recognizing the important role of professionals in nation building, the sustained development of reservoir of professionals whose competence and whose standard of professional service and practice are internationally recognized and considered world class. So the, the need to sustain development your owners and professionals are more apparent and complemented by legislations. There are now 46 professional regulatory laws regulating various professions under the administrative supervision of the PRC. Some of these PRLs already have existing CPD provisions, your owners, as a requirement for the continuing practice of profession and for the issuance of the PIC. Uh, CPD for these professions is already acceptable, your owners, as a requirement for the continuing practice of the respective profession. Further, the need for CPD PD is bolstered by the fact that the Philippines is a member of the ASEAN and committed to ASEAN integration, especially in terms of mobility of workers and services. So to take advantage of the opportunities brought by this integration, your owners, Filipino professionals must have qualifications which are competitive and be at par with the qualifications of other professionals from countries with the ASEAN within the ASEAN region. Thus, the creation of the Philippine Qualification Framework or PQF in October of 2012 paved the way for the enactment of the CPD Act of 2016 as a requirement to PQF and the ASEAN Qualifications Reference Framework and ASEAN Mutual Recognition Arrangements or Agreements. In January of 2018, as you earlier mentioned, uh, Honorable Senator Revilla, the PQF was finally institutionalized into law with the enactment of Republic Act No. 10968 or the PQF Act of 2016. We also believe, uh, Your Honors, that CPD law is a form of social legislation and this is very important for us in PRC. It will promote the general welfare of the people, especially the common tao. CPD is imbued with public interest because professionals' discompetence will have impact to the people who are at the receiving end of professional services or practice. So CPD is a continuing quality assurance mechanism to ensure the general welfare and public interest purpose of professional regulation and to ensure professional competitiveness and sustainability of professional qualification standard as required by the PQF. Of course, your honors, the PRC admits the imperfection in the implementation of the CPD at the initial stage, your honors. Thus, issues and concerns also came out in its implementation. The issues and concerns against the CPD are rather directed Next slide, Ms. April, are rather directed on the aspects of program accessibility, availability, and affordability, as you already mentioned earlier, uh, Senator Bong. The PRC has ever since endeavored to apply maximum flexibility as its response to the implementation issues. Thus, to run through for what had been done by the PRC to remedy these issues, Your Honors. Next slide, Ms. April. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, on Honorable Bong, uh, PRC issued resolution number 1146 series of 2019, uh, providing for the transition period in the implementation of CPD Act of 2018. In that uh, resolution, the, P, uh, the PRC uh, provided for provisions 
that professionals working overseas are not covered by the CPD requirement. This is in consonance with the proposal of Senator Lapid and Senator Villanueva. Newly licensed uh, professionals are exempted for the first renewal cycle after obtaining their uh, professional identification card or PIC. Reduction of CPD requirements not exceeding 15 CPD units except, of course, for those professions uh, which have existing mutual recognition agreements or other international agreements in the practice of the respective professions, such as the CPAs and nurses. It provided antecedents to meet prior to full implementation of the CPD Act of 2016. This is where your proposal, Honorable uh, Senator Revilla, for the creation of the career progression and specialization programs no? as an antecedent for the full implementation of the CPD Act. No? And this will be interesting as, I am go as we are going to present this later, uh, Senator Bong. All duly validated and recognized CPD units earned may be accumulated and transferred in accordance with the pathways and equivalencies of the PQF. Again, this is in connection with the proposal to institutionalize the career progression and specialization of professionals uh, provided in the proposed in your proposed bill, Honorable Senator Bong Rivilla. Inclusion of a section for presumptive approval for all types of application relative to CPD accreditation. And of course, professionals who executed an undertaking uh, when it was first implemented in 2017 uh, previously shall only comply not more than 15 CPD units as provided under this uh, resolution on transition period. Next slide, Ms. April. Uh, here are the specific uh, resolutions issued by the PRC to address the concerns or issues regarding accessibility, availability, and affordability of CPD programs. Uh, memorandum number seven, uh, as early as 2017, the PRC already called for accreditation as CPD provider of ECUCs or state universities and colleges and GOCCs or government-owned controlled corporations. Uh, as of this uh, moment, po, your honors, there are already 335 government institutions, including the DOH, the NAYAP of the DepEd, the PNP uh, for those in public service, the Philippine Public Safety College, the PD uh, Bureau of Fire, and uh, more ECUCs are now accredited CPD providers already, your honors, and there are 171 private institutions also. Uh, constitu uh, constituting the juridical uh, offering of uh, CPD, your honors. Uh, next. And then we have PRC Reuso number 1204, providing for the guidelines on the determination of CPD provider seminar and registration fee. This is the complaint earlier raised by Honorable Senator Gachalian. In this resolution, we provided the standard formula on how to compute the fees to be collected for registration in CPD programs, and it will be monitored and evaluated by the respective CPD councils uh, of different professions, Your Honours. Uh, this was issued in 2019, uh, Your Honours. Next, Ms. April. Then we have resolution number 1207, also issued in 2019, uh, providing for the guidelines on the accreditation of online training programs. This will address the issue of accessibility and availability. Uh, we have right now, uh, especially in this time of pandemic, more, pro uh, more online program offerings for webinars and video on demand. Uh, so right now we have 9,285 online programs were accredited while 8,465 were accredited during the pandemic. No, this is to address the issue of availability and accessibility, Your Honours. Next, uh, Ms. April. We also have PRC Resolution 1239, and this is very important for us. This is uh, PRC's way of recognizing the heroism of professionals who are providing essential services during the public health emergency. Uh, uh, we are providing a maximum of 45 CPD credit units only for the very fact that they are assigned 
or stationed in the front line, such as those in the health sector, your honors, and public safety, such as the police officers, those in the transportation industry, your honors. So we are providing them maximum of 45 CPD credit units, your honor, without attending any CPD programs or seminars, your honors. Next slide, please. Then we have resolution number 1240, reiterating ways of learning that can earn CPD units and undertaking and extending acceptance of undertaking until December 2021. First, uh, during this pandemic, we acknowledge the difficulty in uh, complying with the required CPD units or owners. So we re are resorting to lifelong learning and self-directed learning and giving them certain credit units or owner while they are at home, your owner. And uh, by reason also of the pandemic, the PRC deemed it necessary to extend the acceptance of undertaking until December 2021. I, I heard that uh, the commission is contemplating of further extending it up to 2022 because of the declaration of the president of uh, an ongoing uh, emergency, uh, your honors. Uh, next, please. And then uh, PRC reason number 1248 uh, in 2020, waiving the accreditation fee for online training program, understanding the difficulty of face-to-face -face, uh, CPD programs, your owners, and with more online training programs being offered, the PRC deemed it necessary to waive the accreditation fee for online training programs if the same is offered for free, your owner, by the provider. And so far, there are 5,921 free online programs uh, that were accredited during the COVID-19 pandemic, Your Honors. Next. Uh, there are the other uh, resolutions issued by the PRC, Your Honors, again, uh, in order to address accessibility, availability, and affordability of CPD programs. Uh, resolution number 1177 dated 16 July 2019, recognizing the services rendered by registered or licensed professionals as examination personnel. If they are volunteering to the PRC to be uh, personnel that can be useful in the conduct of licensure examination, they will be given certain credit units, Your Honor. Next. We have the resolution providing for the guidelines on self-directed learning and creditable learning activities. Next. We have guidelines on the accreditation of informal learning and professional work experience because there are sectors who are really pushing for inclusion of professional work experience as source of creditable credit units, Your Honor. We have guidelines on the updates on the implementation of CPD program carrying over of excess CPD units to the next renewal cycle. This was issued also in 2019, Your Honor. Uh, this will be uh, to address the issue that you raised earlier on convenience. Extending the validity of PIC during the enhanced community quarantine period so that uh, with the difficulty of uh, processing the PICs, your honor, due to skeletal workforce and delivery of the IDs, professionals should not worry about the the the, 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 the dates of the expiration of their PIC because the PRC is now extending the validity of the P PIC, Your Honor. Next, approval of the rescheduling of the CPD program offerings uh, to address the, the issue raised regarding accessibility and uh, convenience, Your Honor. Next, we have also resolution on the waiving, waiving of the accreditation fee for online trainings and programs offered, as mentioned earlier. Next. Next, Ms. April. And of course, the uh, assistance to frontliner professionals and overseas Filipino professionals. Next. And additional evaluators and monitors to assist the CPD councils. This is to ensure your owner the complaint about quality CPD programs. We want to have more uh, evaluators and monitors to assist the CPD councils kasi lumalaki na po at dumadami na ang CPD providers natin ngayon compared to the first uh, or two years of the implementation of CPD, your honors. 
Then we have the guidelines on the implementation of the CPDAS. This is the CPD uh, accreditation system. Uh, this is the computer system being used by the PRC. So ngayon po, computer uh, through internet na po ang lahat ng application and submission of the application for accreditation of CPD as a provider of CPD programs and uh, even the self-directed learning, Your Honor. Next, uh, Ms. April. So for your honor, these are the, the these are the number of undertakings executed since uh, 2017, a total of two two million five hundred seventy five seven hundred seventy thousand renewed PIC, and uh, half of it, no, at least half of it executed an undertaking or sixty five point thirty one percent. Your honor, next slide. Next slide, Miss April. Uh, pasensya na po your owners na traffic din po yung uh, pag-transfer ng slides. Next slide, uh, Miss April. Okay. So, uh, accreditation of applications, a total of 213 uh, provider program and other activities for accreditation uh, for SDL uh, have been processed by the PRC. Uh, for programs 58,298. This is across the 43 professions, Your Honors, and other activities for accreditation, uh, 19,510, Your Honors. Next, uh, Miss April. Now, here comes the, the salient features of the proposed CPD bill, Your Honor. Uh, first, in the, in the declaration of policy, Your Honors, we would really want to concentrate on the importance of the updating and upgrading of knowledge, skills, and values, and the pursuit of the national qualifications framework as mandated by the PQF, Your Honors. With regard to Section 5, Your Honor, uh, this is very important, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Honorable Bong, uh, Senator Bong, that CPD is now a mandatory requirement in the upgrading and updating of knowledge, skills, and values, and qualification standards for the practice of profession. Meaning, we agree, Your Honor, that the, sub the mandatory nature of CPD should not be attached to the requirement for the renewal of the PIC. Because that is the, the crux, you know, the center of controversy when CPD is made made as a coercive regulatory power in order for the professional to renew their PIC so that the uh, professionals are more interested on the non-essential compliance with the CPD in order to renew the PIC rather than the substantive compliance of upgrading the knowledge, Your Honor. And then in Section 6, Your Honor, this is in accord also and we support your proposal to establish the, the sum of the mentioned earlier uh, resolutions issued by the PRC to be incorporated, Your Honors, in the proposed bill so that it will not be temporary remedy on the part of the PRC as an executive agency, but institutionalized if it is made into a uh, legislation or law, Your Honor. So we, we are proposing and we are amenable for the inclusion of the concepts, the purposes of those resolutions that we mentioned earlier and was already or were already issued by the PRC, Your Honor, uh, to address the issue of affordability, accessibility, availability, convenience, and quality, Your Honor. Uh, next slide, Ms. April. Also, in Section 7 and 8 of the proposed uh, consolidated bill, Your Honor, uh, this is also pursuant to, the, to your proposal in your proposed bill that we want to institutionalize the, the creation and the implementation of the career progression and specialization of the professionals so that uh, CPD can be a, a uh, component, integral component, uh, in order for professionals to reach, to achieve, to obtain the qualification standards mandated by the Philippine Qualifications Framework, Your Honor, through 
career progression and specialization. Hindi na po stand alone ang CPD ngayon, Your Honor, sa pinopropose natin. Meron na po siyang silbi kasi lahat po ng knowledge and skills niya ay pwede na nating i-transfer to achieving the career progression and specialization, Your Honor, and the PQF or National Qualification, ultimately, Your Honor. And then, of course, Section 9 is very important, Your Honor. Uh, we want government agencies and private sectors employing our professionals to have active role in the implementation of the CPD, Your Honor, especially on the issue of funding so that CPD will be affordable, Your Honor, and accessible and available like those in the PNP, for example, Your Honor. If they are members of the PNP and there are training programs of the PNP and the PNP is a CPD provider and they have a budget for that, then there will be no problem as to the affordability and accessibility, Your Honor. And Section 10 for the funding provision, we really ask funding provision uh, since this is a joint committee hearing with the finance for the operation of the CPD Council, Your Honor for the operation of the CPSP or Career Progression and Specialization, the respective CPD councils, uh, the evaluators, the monitors, the Career Progression and Specialization committees created by the PRC, the computerization, your owners, of CPD. Uh, we want to continue that in order for us to fully implement the CPD, your owners. And then, of course, uh, we would want that funding provision to be included in the proposed consolidated bill, Your Honors. Next slide, Ms. April. That would be the end of the presentation, Your Honor, insofar as the PRC is concerned. Uh, just a note, Your Honor, that we already submitted our rather comprehensive uh, position papers regarding the basis why we want CPD to be enhanced, Your Honor, and why we want CPD to be uh, updated, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Honorable Senator Bong Revilla and Senator Win. Maraming salamat. Thank you, uh, Attorney Gabao. And uh, please email the to the uh, committee secretariat, uh, secretariat your presentation so, so we can consider it uh, when we uh, come out with our committee report. Okay, Attorney. We will, Your Honor. Thank you. All thank right. You. Thank, thank you. Okay, for PRC, I uh, would like to recognize my uh, very good friend, uh, Senator Mig Subiri. Uh, good morning, good morning, Mr. Chairman. I'm just here to support your measure and the measures at hand. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you, Senator Subiri. And of course, uh, Senator Gachalian, baka, baka you want to go ahead. Ikaw uno mo magtanong, if you have questions. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Talagang mga taga-Valenzuela, magagaling ho, kaya wala na akong itatanong eh. No? Um, well, I just want to commend the PRC. To be honest about it, I came here with an open mind. Uh, but knowingly, uh, some of the issues that I got no, from the different professionals. Kami ho, mga politiko, we get invited to speak. I'm sure si Senator Migs, get in, he gets invited to speak to various professionals. And we get a lot of comments. And uh, I'd like to commend the uh, ERC through uh, Attorney Gabao on their presentation on being proactive, no? because I, this is the first time I, I heard about the uh, different resolutions and different issuances of ERC to address the issue of affordability and accessibility. Yung dalawa ho talagang nasasagap ko po, eh, no? mahal at ang hirap po pumunta dahil nasa Metro Manila. And I'd like to commend the uh, the proactive uh, approach by accrediting uh, CPD providers, including government agencies. I, I would like to just request the PRC to include uh, LOOCs no, in local universities and colleges. Like sa Valenzuela, attorney, meron tayong pamantasan ng gusto sa Valenzuela that yes, we sure. can yes, have sure. to provide uh, as a CPD provider. And then uh, I'd like to also commend the standardized and rationalized rationalization of fees no, yung nasabi ko po kanina sa opening statement, marami hong reklamo dahil uh, kung three-day po yung CPD nila, one and a half day ho, nasa mall. No? Kasi kasama ho nung, kasama doon sa program nila yung mall eh. No? And, but added cost ho yan because they have to stay in the hotel and all of the things. No? But by rationalizing the fees, uh, I think that will be the one uh, meant to address 
uh, this type of um, extracurricular activities. And also the online training programs that uh, I saw earlier, this is really to respond to the times right now, especially under the pandemic. One thing we learned is online is effective. You know, as, as the, the, the ultimate testament is what we're doing right now. And the PRC has jumped the gun in, um, in, in accrediting uh, online courses because that will really bring down costs because instead of coming to Manila, they can all do their review and their CPD through uh, online. So those are the things that I want to commend the PRC and um, uh, like, uh, I see the need and importance of CPD, especially in terms of lifelong learning. And uh, I support uh, the CPD, but uh, let, uh, I support the CPD and I support the enhancement and the updating as, as what was provided earlier by Attorney Gabao. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Senator Gachalian. I uh, would like to recognize also Senator Aimee Marcos. Ma'am Aimee, do you have any questions or any opening statements? Uh, Senator Mix, do you have any questions? At this point in time, I'm just listening in, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, th thank you. Okay, uh, for PRC, uh, in my uh, opening statement, I mentioned the uh, concerns raised by uh, stakeholders. So my questions will uh, seek to address these concerns regarding the transition for renewing license. Uh, the amendment implementing rules and regulations, IRR, of uh, Republic Act 10912, promulgated by, by the Professional Regulation Commission, PRC, on February 7, 2019, provided for the transition period in requiring CPD for the renewal of professional license and accreditation system for the practice of professions. Uh, the said transition period shall uh, expire after all uh, uh, and, and antecedents have been met upon the recommendation of the CPD councils uh, through their respective boards and approved by the commission. Uh, tama po ba na ang uh, pagtatapos ng transition period ay uh, magkakaiba bawat profession? Depende sa completion ng priority uh, deliverables ng PRC, RP, R, R, uh, PRBs, uh, CPD councils, IPOs, and APOs, CPD uh, providers, and uh, professionals. PRC, uh, you may answer. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, pwede, po, pwede pong magkaiba ang, uh, ang, uh, ang pagtatapos ng transition period dahil iba-iba ang sitwasyon ng mga uh, uh, pro bawat profession. May mga malalaki, may mga, and may mga malilit na mas manageable yung uh, uh, requirements and at the same time yung compliance ng mga stakeholders nila. So ilan na po sa ating mga professionals ang tapos na sa transition period? As of now po, uh, Mr. Chair, wala pa po. Wala pa po. Ah, wala pa? No, mm -hmm. po. Lalo na dahil inabutan ng siguro nitong pandemic, kaya uh, yung compliance eh, may, na, na, na delay. Okay, sa ilalim ng section uh, 10.2 uh, ng nasabing amended IRR, Hindi required ng CPD ang mga OFW professionals during transition period. Ngunit ang exempt na, na ito ay nais gawing uh, permanent exemption sa ilalim ng panukalang batas ng mga uh, kasamahan natin. Particularly uh, Senate Bill No. Uh, 1299 ni Senator Lapid, Senate Bill No. 1762 of uh, Senator Villanueva, at Senate Bill No. 1... 101 uh, Senate Bill number 1016 ng inyong lingkod. I understand that you are also in favor of this proposal. Can you elaborate your position on this matter? Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, yung exemption po kasi ng uh, uh, overseas professionals, eh, well, we, we concur with that. Uh, one, 
immediately yung the difficulty of implementation of, of, of uh, requiring professionals in the compliance of uh, for the CPD requirements. And uh, secondly, uh, yung, yung, mga, yung requirement po for overseas professionals would be, I mean, would, would basically would be linked to their uh, qualifications, uh, domestic qualifications. And unless now those requirements are also required in their, in their uh, respective host countries, eh, baka hindi na rin kailangan i-require sa kanila. Okay, uh, Republic Act 10912 did not uh, specify the number of CPD credit units that, that will be required from the uh, professionals. Uh, the IRR promulgated under PRC Resolution Number 1032 Series of 2017 provided a matrix of credit units required per profession every three years, which uh, ranges from 30 to 120 credit units. Senate Bill Number 1762 of Senator Villanueva proposes uh, to set it to a maximum 36 every five years. Now, what is your position on this? What will be the repercussions, if any, of such setting uh, a lower ceiling in the number of uh, credit units required? Paano po natin ito maring uh, bigyan ng uh, tugon? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, yung uh, uh, requirement kasi, yung initial requirement na 45 units was the, uh, based upon uh, consultations with the various professional regulatory boards at that time. Uh, and uh, for one reason, or for certain, uh, with the uh, basis of their own, uh, like so I think the one that required yung 105 uh, uh, credit units was accounting the uh, accounting board at that time because of their uh, compliance with their MRA, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yun mga iba naman likes for social work. Their law is specifically mentioned of 45 credit units. Uh, since uh, and at the same time, uh, there were already uh, uh, CPEs or continuing professional education even before the CPD law of 2016 na nagre-require ng mga credit units from DIVA for some of some of the professions and uh, and so uh, i well we we uh, we defer uh, to the uh, legislators to the policy makers on uh, what could be the ideal ideal number of credit units that would be required from the professionals. I think uh, Attorney Gaba would have the latest results of consultations made with uh, the various professional organizations and, prof and professional regulatory boards, if he could be recognized, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Attorney Gaba, you're, you're, you're recognized. Yes, uh, Senator Wong, based on the uh, latest uh, last two consultations that we conducted uh all prbs agree on a 45 credit units your honor uh, as to the years of compliance uh, whether or not that would be three four or five uh most uh but not really that uh i think majority your honor not most but majority agree on a three years your honor but uh, just want to inform also the Honorable Senate uh, that as far as the House of Representatives, they have already uh, approved uh, in the committee level the requirement of 36 credit units for four years of compliance period, Your Honor. Just for the information of the uh, Senate, Your Honor. Please uh, submit your official position on this matter. In your presentation... Yes, you mentioned the uh, numerous resolutions issued by uh, PRC. Uh, may we know the status of the of the implementation of these uh, uh, resolutions? Ang mga reservations and objection, uh, objections po ba ng mga stakeholders 
yung mga professionals, IPOs, APOs, CPD providers dito, no? Uh, are there uh, challenges in the in the implementation of, of the same? Uh, Your Honor, as of now, uh, there was this uh, Facebook uh, post of a certain Bernal, Your Honor. And we examined and investigated that Facebook post. Actually, that Facebook post was uh, originally uh, in 2018 pa, Your Honor. At uh, binuhay na lang uuli ngayong taon. Pero yung complaints niya po doon, Your Honors, were already addressed by the resolutions that I mentioned earlier, Your Honor. And those resolutions are being implemented right now, Your Honor. So in uh, effect, we are already addressing the complaints raised by a certain Bernal, Your Honor. And all the other issues and concerns yeah, raised by CPD, Your Honor. Ano yung concern niya? Yung, yung... Uh, Okay. The same thing, Your Honor, about the affordability, accessibility, uh, quality of CPD programs, uh, yeah, inconvenience. Those are the same uh, issues, Your Honor, but that uh, I think uh, PRC tried its best to remedy by the issuance of those resolutions that I uh, mentioned earlier, Your Honor. Okay. It's just... Uh, uh... Binigyang diin ng PRC sa kanilang mga professional bilang uh, pagtugon sa panawagan ng ating Pangulong Duterte ay ang amendment sa Section uh, 3 o ang definition of the term online learning activities. May we know if the proposed amendment to the definition will suffice? Uh, I... Pardon, Your Honor. Uh, regarding the definition of online learning, Your Honor, uh, yeah. uh, the, the definition of the online learning uh, as, we, as we read it in the proposed bill sent to us by the Secretariat of this uh, Honorable Committee, uh, we agree to that uh, definition, Your Honor, uh, because after all, that is being implemented already by the PRC, Your Honor, as of this moment, Your Honor. Okay. Tungkol po sa requirement ng CPD credit units for the renewal of uh, professional identification cards, PICs, we can uh, trace such a requirement uh, from Executive Order Number 266, Series of 1995, regarding uh, institu institutionalization of the continuing professional education, CPE, programs of the various professional uh, Regulatory Boards, PRB, uh, under the supervision of the Professional Regulation uh, Commission. Section 1 of EO 266 states that uh, the completion by professional licensees of the continuing professional education, CPEs, uh, programs adapted by all boards is hereby imposed as mandatory requirement for the uh, renewal of uh, professional licenses. Ilang por porsyento po ba ang uh, 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 ng ating mga professionals ang nag-comply na sa nasabing CPE requirement? Attorney? Uh, Doon po yan sa uh, uh, Senator sa EU number 266. Uh, yes. I, I have no idea as to the compliance uh, of EO 266. No? But, but uh, in so far as the CPD Act of 2016 kasi, uh, Senator Bong, eh, kasi nga, dire-require namin yung 45 credit units and we were imposing that uh, until nag-issue nga po ng resolution ang PRC uh, yung transitional uh, implementation ng CPD and reduce it to 15. But before that uh, the transition resolution for the implementation of CPD Act, eh, karamihan po ng boards talaga ay 45. Uh, katulad ng sabi ni uh, Chair Pilando po kanina, except those uh, professions with existing uh, mutual recognition agreement or international agreement uh, patungkol po sa pag-practice ng kanilang profession uh, international po. Uh, pero lahat po yan ay kinukomply po uh, prior to the resolution implementing the transition period. Ilang porsyento po ba ng ating mga professionals ang nag-comply sa nasabing uh, CPE requirement? 
Ano po ang uh, pagkakapareho at kaibahan ng requirement ng CPE at ng CPD sa pag-renew ng uh, PIC? Uh, for that matter, Your Honor, uh, yung record po kasi nung EO266 compliance, Your Honor, I don't know if uh, the PRC has that record as of this moment, Your Honor. But we promise to send uh, to this honorable uh, committee, Your Honor, the data uh, once we gathered it, uh, Your Honor. Sa ngayon po, uh, ako po ay wala pa akong maibibigay na percentage or data po sa ngayon. Baka si Chairman Pilando, uh, alam. Chairman? Uh, well, uh, we don't, uh, we'll look, we'll get the those records, Mr. Chair. Pero yun kasi, yun, yun yun compliance before the CPD Act of 2016. Yung may mga under their special laws, some professions were required to comply with their own CPEs. It was called continuing professional education at that time. And that's only for certain professional uh, professions. And when CPD, the CPD Act came in 2016, all professions were required to uh, uh, have a CPD uh, compliance. Okay, pakisubmit na lang po sa atin, ano? Yes, Regarding sir. dito naman sa EO266, was not uh, expressly uh, repealed by Republic Act uh, 10912 or the CPD law. Uh, is it still in effect after the the enactment of uh, Republic Act 10912? Or was it uh, impliedly repealed by Republic Act 10912? Well, our understanding is it would have been repealed by the legislative measure uh, uh, because that would just have been an executive issuance. Okay. Uh, before I proceed, baka... Baka merong katanungan yung ating uh, napakasipag na senadora from Ilocos Norte, Senator Amy Marcos. May kumar, uh, may, may question ka. Wala naman at uh, andito lang ako kasi um, as uh, you probably know, the civil service uh, budget falls under me. And uh, oh, yes. yung mga budget hearing namin eh. So ina-anticipate so, ko lang yung mga issue kung anong lilitaw, kaya nakikinig rin ako dito dahil uh, may nagsasabi nga yung continuing professional deploy, de development, nagiging rocket daw ng ilang uh, grupo, maraming uh, salitang ganon, tapos uh, maraming reklamo ngayong COVID, uh, although the civil service very clearly tried to put online many of the applications, still the concern about uh, the... Um, Teachers, the lack of nurses continue to plague us. Yun lang. Okay. Thank you, Senator Aimee. Uh, before I continue with my questions, meron bang mga resource persons tayo na gusto magbigay ng inputs or statements? Just, uh, just raise your, your hand. Kung meron. So, wala. Oh, okay. Please state your, your name, ma'am. Uh, hindi po naka-register dito siya. Yes. Opo. Uh, Yolanda Reyes po, Commissioner for uh, PRC. And I'm uh, an Oversight Commissioner for the CPD. Gusto ko lang pong bigyan pansin yung uh, puntos na affordability. Kasi po, ito matagal na po namin in-institutionalize ito. May resolution po na, na kami nito. Uh, na, at uh, yung mga government agencies, government uh, 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 at saka mga skwela natin uh, maging, maging providers. So nag-apply nag, uh, naman po sila at uh, ito po, pagka po sila ay may mga in-house training at saka may in-house uh, seminars yung pong mga in-house seminars nila at trainings are already compliance to the CPD uh, requirements of our of, uh, of PRC po itong programa per, per profession. So, ibig sabihin po, yung lahat ng kawani natin sa gobyerno may not anymore attend special or other uh, seminars outside of their uh, departments. Yun na po yung kanilang compliance. Yun po yung nakredit po namin. So, just we can have that affordability issues. And besides, it really updates. No? Para ma malaman po na talagang na-upgrade and na-update po sila sa kanilang mga professional practice uh, requirements. Um, Yun, lang, yun po ang isa kong uh, gustong ipa-highlight ipa lang po da, para ma, 
At uh, doon naman po sa mga na, nabanggit ni Honorable uh, Win Gatchalian, tungkol po doon sa mga programa na part of them would be going to to uh, to the uh, malls, etc. po. Meron po kami yung pong mga CPD councils, ine-evaluate pong mabuti ang kanilang mga programa na sinasubmit. Tapos po may monitors po kami. May magmo-monitor po sa mga bawat uh, programa na sinasubmit sa aman, amen, at ina-approve. So na nare-report po lahat yan at nabibigyan po ng pansin yan pagka po may ganyang mga sitwasyon. And if uh, if it is indicated in their program that they, it's a free hour or free session to to wherever they want to go, wala pong puntusyon kasi po ang CPD councils talaga pong tinitingnan po nilang mabuti ang mga programa and they put uh, credit uh, credit units po sa bawat uh, sa bawat session na na, ila, na nakasaad doon sa kanilang programa. Tapos po doon naman po sa mga credit units na sinasabi bakit po yung iba 45 yung bakit yung iba ganito kanya yung pong pagsaad naman po ng pagbigay ng credit unit sa bawat profession nagconsult po yan may consultation uh, po yan to their to the academe to their professional organizations at saka po mga stakeholders marami pong usap usapin yan so before they they came up with a very clear number of what number they want to use for their profession, talaga pong napag-usapan niya, napag-agreehan niya. So, yun po ang aking uh, gusto sabihin at uh, gusto ko rin pong idagdag na wala naman pong na-deny na, na renewal during this um, implementation of CPD. Uh, that wala pong na-deny uh, kung ang patungkol ay ang CPD compliance dahil nga po doon sa undertaking na in-institute ng PRC. Pag nag-undertaking ka, kunyari mo, wala kayo pong, hindi kayo nakakompleto o hindi kayo nakapag-CPD program but you need your license immediately, we will issue it so long as you uh, issue or you comply with that undertaking. Mag-undertaking lang po kayo. So yun, yun po ang mga gusto ko lang pong ipadagdag na clarifications para po uh, sa ating mga kasamahan dito. Marami pong salamat. Thank you, ma'am, for your inputs. Uh, we'll take note of that. Uh, Senator Wynn? Mr. Chair, I have um, a quick question to ma'am Reyes. Ma'am Reyes, uh, I, you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, it, it, uh, there's a lot of flexibility now being implemented by the Commission to make it affordable. Um, I, and I, I love that. No? I commend that because of uh, 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 you see the, uh, the Commission's being sensitive to uh, the plight of our professionals. Um, but on the other side of the coin, ma'am, uh, that flexibility can also become a cause for um, uh, non-standardization of courses. No? For example, I heard you earlier, ma'am, in-house seminars, in-house can be credited. But uh, if the goal is lifelong learning, upgrading of skills, uh, how do we now uh, ensure that these in-house trainings are part of that uh, part of a standard you know, in terms of upgrading uh, knowledge and upgrading skills. Okay, for example, dito po sa Senate, I noticed that we have a lot of seminars you know, and we have uh, lawyers in there are a lot of lawyers in our in our in, in this institution for obvious reasons. And I know there are a lot of seminars. Um, how do we ensure that those seminars are indeed uh, contributing to upgrading of skills and knowledges as opposed to just seminars lang siya? No? And there are a lot of ganitong mga in-house seminars across different professions no? uh, in the LGU, in corporations. So how do we know that, how do we ensure that it's contributing to upgrading of knowledge? Thank you. Um, Yolanda, um, you're recognized. Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ang napakaganda po ng tanong ni uh, Senator Win. Kasi dito po papasok yung career progression and specialization program. Yun pong sinabi namin na accredit yung mga in-house trainings and programs uh, and uh, seminars of the different agencies and government departments natin would answer yung compliance nila to the CPD 
programs for the renewal of license, which we were implementing before. Because we do not want to deny, you know, especially our government uh, uh, employees. Well, of course, any of any professional for that matter. Kaya po meron tayong mga ina-accredit. Uh, of course, this will upgrade them. Pero yung sinasabi nyo pong for higher learnings, eto na po, dito na po papaso si career progression and specialization uh, programs nang na pinapasok natin as a major component of the CPD. Kasi po, ang mga boards po ngayon, uh, bawat profession, meron po silang career progression and specialization program committee. Bawat profession po ito. And each committee will come up with a roadmap on how a professional will become a specialized professional in a specific field. Kanya-kanya pong roadmap yan. And uh, also for those in government, ito pong career progression and specialization committee ng bawat profesyon, meron din po siyang uh, career ladder. ladder no? Meron din siyang mga qualifications on how you can become a, a, senior, profes uh, a senior administrator. Yung mga qualification levels po ng mga uh, positions in government. How do you become a director? Meron din siyang gagawin o yung iba dyan nakagawa na ng career pathways for them to be able to know how they can upgrade themselves or how they can make sure that, you know, if they want to target a certain position, a certain qualification level, then they have a roadmap to follow. Ito po ang ginagawa ng career progression and specialization program. And this is really a very tedious pro project and program because it will entail a lot of research, a lot of alignment, a lot of many things to, to really to do. And uh, that's why we're really asking for a lot, sorry, but a lot of funding for this because we will be asking different people, even international, on the international levels on how we can really be at par, if not better, with our foreign counterparts. So ito pong career progression will really be a good tool a good uh, way of really upgrading our professionals because we will have, kasi may qualification levels po tayo eh. In qualification level seven, qualification level eight, which are aligned with the, the ASEAN region. Lahat po tayo magka, nagkakaintindihan po na pagka qualification level seven ka, meron ka ng degree of qualifications that, that you're competent in this field. Pagka... Uh, qualification level 8 naman, more, it, iba naman po yun. Nagkakaintindihan po ito si, sa ASEAN region. Kaya kung hindi po natin susuportahan itong programang ito ng PRC and especially our professional regulatory boards, maiiwan po tayo. They will check five years from now, ilan ang nasa, ilan ang, say, engineers na nasa level 7. Kung, nas, kung ilang percent lang po tayo, then we are not doing good our professionals will not be competitive. Sasabihin po, ay, huwag ng Philippines, konti lang ang, na, na, ang mga nasa level 7 dyan. Konti lang ang mga professionals na ganyan. So I think it's really very important that if we really want to bring up the standards of our professional practice in the international world, international scene, we really have to push, push for this. And thank you for that uh, question, uh, Senator Wynn, because gusto po ta talaga naming pa- uh, uh, ng ating mga professionals by being there. And many of them are already there, but we just have to give them the qualification recognition that is given by government. And, and in our case, it is the PRC. Salamat po. Okay. Senator Wynn, meron pa? Okay. Okay, uh, ma'am, please state your name po. From Act Philippines po. Yes, uh, Ma'am Bernadette uh, Reyes, you are now recognized. Go ahead, Paul. Naka-mute po kayo. Naka-mute. Uh, okay, unmute. Um, I'm Bernadette Reyes. Um, program manager po ng CPD sa PRC. Palikan uh, ko lang po yung sinabi ni uh, Senator Wynn kanina on how do we keep the standard of yung mga uh, courses coming from the government agencies. Meron po tayo uh, um, ac meron tayong accreditation process na ginagawa ng CPD Council. Ito pong CPD Council is composed of three people. 
representative po ng board, isang galing sa akadim at isang galing sa national organization. Tatlo po ang titingin at mag evaluate ng program. Uh, sinasubmit, the, the government institution submit the uh, their program of activities and their, uh, what we call their uh, instructional uh, design, which states the objectives of the, uh, the program, the learning outcomes, the mode of teaching, the topics to be covered, and the council po will decide. Hindi po siya automatic that if a government institution will, uh, will um, apply for accreditation, dito po nagde-determine yung council as to how much credit units will be awarded. Pagka po uh, medyo uh, nakikita natin na medyo basic, siguro po uh, itrim down lang natin. But, uh, but most of the time naman po, meron pong, meron pong uh, credit units earned. So hindi naman po nasasayang. Chine-check lang po yung standard, no? Uh, whether it's... Uh, it's uh, up to par or whether this learning outcomes from these programs may be used for uh, career progression in the future. Yun lang po. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Bernadette. Uh, sa ngayon, uh, mayroon pa bang concerns ang PRC tungkol sa pondo para sa implementation ng CPD law? Tamang tama na dyan si Senator Aimee. Oh. Mr. Right. Chairman, yeah. Yeah, meron po kasi until now, uh, basically, uh, ang, uh, we don't really have funding for CPD except in 2018 when uh, Senator Recto assisted, uh, uh, assisted the PRC in uh, providing uh, uh, some fund for this implementation. Pero afterwards, uh, wala na po. And it's difficult. Uh, we source, I mean, our activities are usually co-funded by the other activities of the PRC so that we can just proceed with the CPD program. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, maybe also hear the position and recommendations from the groups of professionals na kasama natin ngayon uh, as a teacher. Mr. Chair, hihir it lang ako, no? Yung sinasabi ni... Uh, sige, sige, sige. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Senator Amy, go ahead. Doon Mr. Pilando, ang totoo, yung hinihingi na si PDP, ay hindi na umaabot sa Senate yan, tinatanggal na ng DBM, eh. Hindi oh. ko na nga nakikita doon sa proposal ninyo, parating tinatanggal ng DBCC pa lang. Tama po ba? Tama po ba yun, Chairman? I think so, Madam Senator. Kasi hindi ko nadatnan eh, ever since uh, 2019. So perhaps you can give us a letter or some other submission so we can make it of record and official that a request is really pending. Uh, kahit pa paano, pwede naman siguro ilagay yan. Hindi naman masyadong malaki yung halaga. How much was it actually? Actually, at that time, we were just looking at uh, 30 million. Uh, yes, that's right. I recall that it was even less than 50. Eh. Maliit lang noon eh. Ngayon, if uh, we were to update those amounts for the present. Uh, with the implementation of the CPSP, uh, uh, that should increase. Uh, I don't have the exact figures now, ma'am, uh, but we can send it immediately. Yes, please send it to my chairman so that uh, we can all uh, lobby for it and... Uh, uh, Senator Gachalian is also here and uh, he heads our education committee. So perhaps all together we can pour for you and uh, finally put this problem to rest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Senator. Ang lakas mo naman kay Senator Aimee. So, ayan. Uh, sigurado na mapupontohan yan. I'm sure Senator Aimee will take care of that. That's support namin yan. Okay, let's now hear from uh, our teachers. Uh, <laughs> Sino po yung... Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, Senaida Concepcion. Siya ba? Bakit taas po yung kamay? Yes. Which? In this one. Yung oh. Gary. Si Pick Up uh, President, Jerry. Siya ba? Okay. Uh, President Jerry Cano, you are now recognized. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Chairman of uh, this Honorable Committee and to the members of this committee, uh, Honorable Marcos and Senator Mig Sobiri, akong silingan din sa Pagayan de Oro Bukidnon. And of course, uh, to our Senator also, uh, Win Gachalian, and to all the members of the professional groups and of course, our uh, professional regulation commission commissioners and i just would like to make a a manifestation of support uh mr chairman uh with regards to the uh, position of the professional criminologist association of the philippines on the matter of the continuing professional development or continuing professional education among criminologists in this country uh, we firmly believe, uh, Mr. Chairman, that this is a quality assurance mechanism of our professionals. And uh, from that uh, principle, uh, we take off from that uh, perspective that uh, education is a continuing process and that there is a, an essential need that there should be continuing professional development uh, in the practice of the criminology profession in this country. And... Uh, as a member also, Mr. Chairman, of the Continuing Professional Development, tama po yung nabanggit kanina, that uh, we evaluate the programs uh, that uh, the providers of the CPD are submitting uh, bago natin uh, ina-approve yan, talagang binubusisi natin, qualified ba yung mga resource persons doon na magsasalita, meron ba silang expertise, and uh, really, uh, yung program ba ay eh, uh, for update and for upgrading. And of, of course, uh, we would like also to add, Mr. Chairman, with regard to the to the matter on accessibility and practicability, is that uh, lahat po, kasi kami sa criminologists, no, kami sa criminology profession of this country, uh, karamihan po ng aming mga membro, we are more than 200,000 in this country, uh, kar karamihan po ng aming mga membro nasa law enforcement sector of our country. And lahat po ng training ng Philippine National Police, PIDEA, NBI, Philippine Coast Guard, BGMP, Bureau of Fire, lahat po ng training na binibigay nila, Philippine Public Safety College, eh kinoconsider po namin yan as part of their self-directed learning. And all of these trainings are given due equivalent for the renewal of their PRC IDs. So with that, Mr. Chairman, the Professional Criminologist Association of the Philippines, together with our Chairman of the Board, Attorney Ramil Gabao, stands in the full support for the implementation of the continuing professional development, lalong lalo na sa ating mga criminologists, Filipino criminologists, with the intention of having foreign reciprocity uh, in the practice of this profession. Maraming maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Hey, thank you very much, uh, President Jerry. Uh, we'll take note of that. Uh, Yung, uh, yung official position nyo po at uh, yung proposed measure sa sabi po na. Okay? So, pakisabit na lang po sa ating committee. And now, pakinggan naman natin yung ating uh, representative ng mga teachers at uh, saka PPSTA. Taas na po yung kanang kamay. Kung sino po yung nasaan po sila. Martinez po from Act Philippines. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, ah, uh... Good morning, okay, po, Jocelyn. Go ahead, go ahead. You are now recognized. I'm um, Jocelyn. Good morning, po, uh, Honorable Senators uh, Ramon Rivera Jr., Senator Aimee Marcos, Senator Winga Chalian, and Senator Mig Subi. Uh, maraming salamat po sa pag-invite sa hangin ng mga teachers para po dito sa sa Senate hearing on... Ah, medyo mahina po. Excuse me. Uh, medyo mahina po. Uh, eh, wala po ba kayong video? Ay, okay, okay, okay. okay. Sige, sige. Pakilakas na lang. Ayan, alright, alright. I can see you now. Okay lang po, ma'am. Oh, sige, patayin nyo na lang yung video para ano na lang. Para yeah, right. Okay, I understand. Ma'am Marilu Ong, please. Ma'am, pakipatay po yung ano, yung audio. Wala po para... pa na kailangan talaga. Okay, okay uh, go ahead. Uh, Ma'am Jocelyn, go ahead. Uh, 
Salamat po ulit. Naniniwala po kami sa hani ng mga teachers na kailangan-kailangan po talaga namin yung CPD o yung conti- uh, continuing professional development. Ayun nga po sa UNESCO, kay, uh, ito po yung mga batayan para po mapaunlad ng teachers yung kanyang prof- uh, professional growth. Pero yun nga po uh, sa mga sa mga amin pong uh, pag pagpupulong sa iba't ibang mga re- uh, regions, sa iba't ibang mga schools, ang stand po talaga namin ay for the repeal of the CPD law. Dahil po, po talaga ang mga teachers ay uh, salamat po may mga resolutions na nilabas ang uh, PRC na hindi na po gagastos ang mga teachers. Nagpapasalamat po kami doon. Pero po yung uh, stand ng mga teacher na yung pong mga uh, seminars po na ibinibigay ng mga DepEd ay sapat na po ito. Uh, ang, ang hiling po sana namin ay palakasin yung mga institusyon para makapagbigay ng mga kalidad na seminars, training sa ating mga teachers. Kagaya po nung nakaraan pong uh, bakasyon namin, nagkaroon po kami ng Vincent o yung uh, virtual in-service training. Marami po teachers dito ang yes, uh, nakapasok po kami pero hirap na hirap po talaga yung mga teachers na makakuha ng mga certificates para po maging uh, maipresenta namin uh, sa PRC para doon sa, uh, sa amin pong PIC. So ang isa pa po namin concern, Senator Revilla, ay tungkol po doon sa mga private school teachers. Alam naman po natin yung mga private school teachers po ngayon ay uh, hirap na hirap, marami po yung uh, uh, nagsara ng mga private school at marami rin pong mga natanggal na ng mga teachers kasi nga po uh, nagsara na. So, hirap po sila na makapag-avail ng mga CPD doon sa mga providers. Una po, may mga bayad, may mga bayad po ito. Hindi naman po nagbibigay yung mga private school owners na muli bring CPD para sa kanyang mga private school teachers. Uh, isa pa pong punto, dito po sa budget deliberation po na nangyayari ngayon, ngayon po ay DepEd budget hearing, kinaltasan pa po ng budget yung para po sa mga seminars and, and trainings ng ating mga teachers. So, papaano po kaya ang mangyayari sa aming mga teachers? Uh, kaya ang hiningi po namin ay sana ay uh, maripil ito yung po ang stand namin at palakasin na lang yung mga institusyon na nagbibigay ng mga kalidad na trainings sa amin. Marami pong salamat. Thank you, ma'am. We understand your concerns, no? Please submit na lang po yung inyong uh, committee, yung, sa, yung official position ninyo for the uh, for the proposed bills. At uh, uh, umasa po kayo, tutugunan natin yan. Okay, pakinggan naman po natin ang, uh, ang nurses, no? Ito sa healthcare workers po natin. Para ano to, marami pa tayong bills na itatakal today. So, ma'am, for the healthcare workers, yung nurses... Ayun. Uh, um, please state your name, sir. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, Honorable uh, Senator Villa. Melbert Reyes po, the current president of the Philippine Nurses Association. I would like to read our manifesto. When uh, the CPD implementation uh, began, nurses were among the professionals who were heavily affected by hefty registration fees. Most nurses were and still are contractual employees of private hospitals who do not enjoy security of tenure. At present, only government nurses are covered by salary grade 15 under existing salary standardization laws, but they still have to enjoy this benefit fully. They could not afford huge registration fees given their low salary. We were asked, are the changes in the law necessary to a certain extent, yes, but is the repeal of RA 10192 totally necessary? The Philippine Nurses Association answers in the negative. Republic Act 10192 has a noble intention. It aims to deliver the best in upgrading our professionals' competence, which objective is specified in detail by PRC Resolution number 1032, series of 2017, as follows to enhance and upgrade the competencies and qualifications of professionals, to ensure national and international alignment of competencies and qualifications of professionals, ensure the development of quality assured mechanisms of of for the validation, accreditation, and recognition of formal, non-formal, and informal learning outcomes, to ensure maintenance of core competencies and development of advanced and new competencies, 
and recognize and ensure the contributions of professionals in uplifting the general welfare, economic growth, and development of the nation. Besides, the state's policy to make competent professions is in line with the Republic Act 10968, otherwise known as the Philippine Qualification Framework Act. The law's objectives are to encourage lifelong learning of Filipinos to provide employees specific training, standards, and qualifications aligned with industry standards, among others, the two supplement each other in that one focuses on education within schools and other and the other on the professional level. Both target the creation of a globally competitive labor force. Surely, there are valid concerns on registration fees. This has been addressed by the, P, uh, by the professional regulation commissions on their different resolutions. The Philippine Nurses Association offers 15 units of CPD programs for free to its members. If it can do so, others, uh, other AFO can follow. In fact, the Philippine Nurses Association should be part of the technical working group that would oversee the implementation of the said law and its program for lawmakers to repeal Republic Act 10912, 10192, rather, solely on the ground that it is anti-labor ignores the reality that our country will never deliver quality human power without it. It is imperative that improving competence of our professional is necessary in order to foster an achievement and achieve economic growth. A competent workforce that is globally competitive indicates meeting the demands of work for workers who must be innovative and creative. Such workforce can match the characteristic of those who are produced in developed countries. In essence, with the law mandating periodic professional development, our country is close to achieving goal eight of the sustainable development goals. That is promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth full and productive employment and decent, decent work for all. And therefore, the Philippine Nurses Association strongly supports the implementation of the CPD Act with uh, some considerations of making it uh, affordable uh, okay. to, to our you. professional like nurses. Maraming salamat po. All right. Thank you, Melbert. Uh, please submit to the committee your official position uh, on the proposed measure. Okay, Melbert. And of course, uh, pakinggan naman po natin itong uh, uh, doctors, uh, PMA. Yes, go ahead. S sino ba? Uh, taga. Christina Manalo. Ma'am, you, you, you are recognized. You're representing uh, Ayan. Narinig po ako? Yes, narinig po muna amin kayo, ma'am. Uh, Tususugan ko lang po yung sinabi ni Jocelyn Martinez, chairperson ng ACT Philippines. Uh, Galang galang na chairperson ng yes, committee. Ma'am, ma can you just make it short? Is it a, just a short uh, manifestation? Para oh, ano lang. Okay. Baba okay. sa ni position. Well, marami po yung ano natin. Mahaba pa. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, to the chairperson of the committee, Senator okay. Roman Bong Rivilla, and to all the highly respected senators present here today, yeah. Senator Mick Subiri and Senator Gachalian, at sa lahat po ng mga taga PRC, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ang PPSD and CR po ay nananatil na ninindigan for the repeal of RA 10912, otherwise known as the Continuing Development Program, Continuing Professional Development of 2016 amid the pandemic and beyond. With the government's responsibility to equip teachers with the tools they need for them to be efficient, effective in the 21st century classroom, the Department of Education, through the attached agency, the National Educators Academy, of the Philippines or the NAAP has been designing and providing programs to enhance the professional growth of the teachers in this digital economy, particularly public school teachers, for them to be able to provide cutting edge education to students, competent to adapt based on the needs of the students by being attuned to the ever changing trends in technology, catering, catering to career opportunities for students in the coming years and equipping them with the necessary skills they need in this changing world, but can still use their ingenuity to teach uh, the, the, the creative ways to develop our children to become productive citizens in the future. Finally, ensure that no child shall be left behind. All of these are more than suffice to provide a continuing professional development to the teachers 
which are all integrated as part of the teacher's portfolio and are submitted in, uh, online to DepEd. And all of these trainings is only one of the criteria needed by the teacher to apply for promotion to the next salary grade. Alam niyo po, totoo po yung bother the statement ng mga teachers and mga nurses. Out of overworked yet underpaid, and in this time of pandemic, undermined. Where the teachers in this new normal, where connectivity is the language, be it in the blended learning platform, in the submission of 39 records, or in the virtual in-service trainings, sa sariling bulsa pa po ng teachers nang gagaling ang internet expenses. Sa Google Meet Classroom, kalangan dalawang gadgets, yung isa para sa presentation of the lesson, at yung isa naman po ay para makita ng teacher yung mga estudyante kung nakikinig pa po ba o nalaglag na rin dahil sa connectivity problem nila sa bahay, either mahina ang internet connection o ubos na rin po ang kanilang load. Yung mga dinet gadgets po ng mga teachers, pinangungutang pa po ito ng mga teachers. Our appeal po, kung tutusin po yung sinasabi niyong ASEAN integration, wala naman po yung portability of the qualification of the teachers. Wala naman po kaming nalalaman na teacher na apply in any of the countries in the ASEAN region para maging teacher. Kung hindi po caregiver, the uh, domestic helper, factory worker. So I think there is no need for this uh, portability program to CPD po. Our appeal po sana, wag na po sumabay pa ang PRC. And it is our prayer that RA 1092 be repealed. PPSC and CR is, is in support of SB, uh, Senate Bill number 267, as introduced by Senator Recto, Senate Bill number uh, 536 by Senator Mick Subiri, and Senator, uh, S Senator Bill 2344 by Senator De La Rosa. And we respectfully urge the passage of these Senate bills. Marami pong salamat. Thank you, ma'am, uh, Christina. And uh, again, I, I now recognize uh, Catherine De Mesa, IPAO, uh, optometry. Uh, Catherine De Mesa. Ma'am? Wala? Wala na? Okay, uh, Dr. Benito Achenza, ng PMA. Dr. Benito Achenza? Mr. Chair? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Ricardo Bata, the PMA CPD Commissioner. Uh, okay. Apologies uh, uh, that uh, our president is not available at this time. But thank you, Mr. Chair, for all ahead, this uh, plan for repeals. The Philippine Medical Association uh, fully support the continuing professional uh, education. It is also our aim to make it simple and very easy and affordable for all our uh, doctors. That's why the, uh, we sent our letter uh, of support for the repeals of RA10912, also especially during the pandemic. And we also like to thank uh, the PRC for all that it's, uh, they are doing for not just uh, the medical community, but for everyone to make the CPD easier and affordable, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Bata. And, um, and now, pakinggan naman po natin yung National Educators Academy of the Philippines, NEAP, uh, under DepEd, Mr. John Arnold Siena. Mr. Chair. Oh, Senator <laughs> Wynn, go ahead. I got confused with Dr. Bata's statement. You said you support the CPD, but you also support the repeal? Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Senator, your Honorable Senator Wynn. We support the continuing professional education for the continued learning of uh, our doctors. Yes. And uh, we also support the re uh, uh, repeal uh, for the changes to make it easier. Because uh, as I know, uh, the, the repeal will make it actually easier for everyone to have conti continuous learning, but without the burden of it, uh, without the, the payment and without the, the uh, hardship that we have to go through to uh, attain that, to renew our license. Yeah. But doctor, repealing it will uh, repeal the CPD the continuing professional development law which mandates the con continuing uh, professional education in all of those programs uh yes as uh, honorable senator i understand that but what i'm trying to say is we should still continue support the continuing professional development of everyone not just uh not the law per se but 
the continuous development, uh, professional development and learnings of every profession, uh, our board senator. Yung po ang ibig kong sabihin. But how do you support that through, through um, you mean if you repeal the law, there's no more law. So all the professionals will undergo each and their own professional development. Uh, yes, uh, Honorable Senator. Yung po yung ibig kong sabihin doon sa sinabi ko po na even before na passage of the CPD law, we uh, all the professionals have their ways of uh, continuous learning po. So that's why, where I'm pointing out uh, Honorable Senator. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, quite, well, it's quite confusing, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll put that on record and then uh, we'll let the chair... Uh, de decipher how to uh, put your comments into uh, this proposal. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pa. Thank you, Senator Wynn. So maybe we we can ask, uh, no, uh, PRC, if we if we repeal the CPD law, what will be the repercussion? So we can better understand uh, what? Uh, what will uh, happen. PRC, please answer. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, well, I. I'm not sure if Dr. Batrak is, uh, would be uh, uh, referring to an amendment of the law rather than a total repeal, because if it's a repeal, then uh, the, uh, there's nothing, no law to hold on. Unless uh, you're, ref and uh, I understand that uh, with the repeal of the uh, CPD law, it is not automatic that the CPE laws of, the, of certain professional Professional uh, professionals would automatically be reenacted. Ah, okay. So good. So pagaralan na lang natin sa TWG, no? But uh, let's proceed to DOH. Doctor Rachel Tolentino, OIC Director Four. Doctor uh, Tolentino, you're now recognized from DOH. Ano pong stand natin dito? Wala? Okay, from Chad, Mr. Peter Carpio. Peter Carpio? Your... Uh, Go ahead. Chair. Good morning. You, uh, on on behalf of Ted and our Carpio. chairperson, we interpose, no, uh, we interpose no objection to the proposed uh, bills. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all. So, so just submit your position, no? Okay? Yes. So, kung wala na pong... Well, you, Okay, thank you very much. Kung wala na pong katanungan dito uh, from my colleagues uh, at kung uh, wala na pong magbibigay ng statements from uh, from our resource persons, we will now proceed to our next agenda. So, wala na ba? So, sino Please state your name. Sino yung gusto salita? Hi, Mr. Chair. Dr. Prechel Tolentino po from the Department of Health. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for the first So, as a part of the government, sir, ang we agree with us the... Uh, oh, we cannot understand you. There, there's something wrong with your speaker. So, maybe pakitanggahan ng yung oh. earphone. Yan, better. Na wala po, nakamute ka ngayon. Then. So maybe we, you, you can just uh, submit your position uh, regarding this measure. No, my, my, uh, uh, si, si, yung ating ComSec will coordinate with your office, okay? Oh, Senator Pia is here. Uh, I, rec I recognize Senator Pia Caetano. Hello, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a yes, quick, go ahead. Just a quick statement. I, I've been monitoring, no? I, I heard all the resource persons. And I wasn't going to comment. Napa comment lang ako because I had the same concern. I I had to um go. I was listening via YouTube, but I heard I have the same concern as Senator Gatchaliano. If there's a concern on um the effectivity of the current CPD, we ask the resource persons to give their very specific comments. Because kayo po ang ang experts, eh, no? We are legislators. You're on the ground. So if you tell us that something's not working, give us solutions. It, in because if you expect it to come from us, then we might come up with something that doesn't work for you. So, 
and and it should also be very tailored to the specific uh your specific profession or industry so i would just like to assist the committee in uh, ensuring that the output that you provide us is something that we can work with yun lang naman and i'll i'll monitor for the the next part mr chair thank you thank you senator pia uh, okay so sino pa Kail tama si Senator Pia, kailan maging precise tayo para hindi tayo magkamali ng pagkuhan ng batas. No? Baka mamaya gagawa tayo ng batas tapos hindi pala makakapabor sa inyo. So, sayang naman. But anyway, uh, again, I enjoin all the stakeholders to submit your position papers. So, so at uh, mag-create po tayo ng TWG, ng Technical Working Group, para maayos po ito. No? Para yung mga concerns ng bawat... Uh, that are representing you, I might, might sa eyes natin. So, okay. So, now, uh, kasama sa tatalakayin natin ngayon sa pagdinig na ito ay isang resolusyon na inihain ng ating uh, Vice Chairman is na si uh, Senator Joel Villanueva na patungkol din sa Professional Regulation Commission o PRC. Uh, Comsec Jane, can you please uh, read into the record the title of the uh, proposed Senate Bill uh, Senate Resolution Number 661. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have Senate Resolution Number 661, Resolution Urging the Senate Committee on Civil Service, Government Reorganization and Professional Regulation, and the Senate Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education, together with the other appropriate committees of the Senate, to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the series of cancellations of various licensure examination schedules, particularly the licensure examination for teachers, let and to identify alternative ways of conducting board examinations amid the pandemic in the new normal. Introduced by Sen Senator Joel Villanueva. Okay. Um, thank you, Comsec. The author of this resolution and our vice chairman, uh, Vice Chairperson of the uh, of the committee, Senator Villanueva, cannot join us today, but uh, sends us his uh, opening remarks for today's hearing to to be inserted into the record. So, malawak po talaga ang uh, epekto ng uh, pandemya ng uh, dulot ng COVID-19. Katulad nga po ng uh, nabanggit sa resolution na inihain ni Senator Villanueva. Karan, uh, karamihan po ng mga professional uh, licensure examinations noong nakaraang taon hanggang ngayong 2021 ay nakansela o na-reschedule. This deprives our examinees and would be uh, uh, professionals of the, of the opportunity to, en to enjoy the recognition and benefits of uh, being licensed professionals. Uh, in particular, the resolution mentioned uh, the plight of our examinees for licensure examinations for professional teachers, LEPT, na ilang beses ding uh, nakansela at uh, nareschedule. Sa katunayan, ayon sa DepEd, meron silang 1,139 uh, provisional teachers na nangangailangan na talagang kumuha ng LEPT dahil uh, natapos na ang kanilang uh, provisional appointment, uh, appointments nitong uh, katapusan ng school year 2020-2021. No? Uh, Nauunawaan po natin na talagang uh, napakahirap ng sitwasyon natin ngayon. Uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic around, our uh, situations became uh, uncertain and unpredictable which uh, made endeavors requiring advanced scheduling, uh, such as professional licensure examinations, very difficult. We have read the, var uh, uh, read the various uh, PRC resolutions uh, canceling the exams, and uh, we acknowledge the reasons cited therein. It is understood that the, the main reason for such uh, cancellations is to ensure the health and safety of all stakeholders. Apart from this, we also recognize that uh, there are certain uh, difficulties being encountered by uh, various professions specific to their cir circumstances in conducting uh, written and uh, practical exams. Naintindihan po namin na walang may kagustuhan na makansila ang mga licensure exams 
na at uh, magdulot ng uh, inconvenience sa ating mga kababayan. Ngunit kailangan din nating suriin ito ng mabuti at tingnan ang maaring gawin na solusyon sa lalong madaling panahon upang makasabay at maka-adapt tayo sa tinatawag nating new normal. Undeniably, this is very important not only to our aspiring professionals but to our health system and economy as well. Before we proceed, may we know if any of our colleagues would uh, want to, to give their opening remarks regarding this topic? Senator? Senator Pia? Yes, uh, go ahead. Oh, you're okay. Wala na iba. Okay. Uh, to give us relevant information and updates regarding this matter, let us first listen to our resource persons from PRC. Uh, chairman? Uh, Mr. Chairman. May our commissioner for licensure be recognized to provide updates on the uh, licensure examinations. Okay, please state your name and may you be recognized. Thank you, uh, Honorable Senator, Chairman of this hearing. Uh, Yolanda Reyes. Reyes. Yes, I'm Yolanda Reyes, the uh, Oversight Commissioner for Licensure. And I would just, uh, I would like to greet also our Honorable uh, Senators present here, Senator Dwayne Gachalian, Senator Mixubiri, Senator Aimee Marcos, and Senator Pia Cayetano, and all our attendees. Magandang, magandang umaga po. Magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. I would just like to give a brief update on uh, the conduct of examinations during this uh, pandemic period. Uh, may I request a uh, share screen? Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, so uh, for last year, 2020, PRC conducted a total of 14 licensure examinations, 10 before the pandemic set in and before the community quarantine were declared in various areas of the country in March, and four during the pandemic in September to December. The examinations were conducted even under the restrictions of a community quarantine where licensure examinations for physicians. No? So we conduct po kami ng physician examinations during the quarantine period because of many requests and because we know also that it's needed. And so this, but this one was conducted under an IATF exemption per, or permission. So the examinations produced 8,599 new professionals, 5,301 of which are health professionals. So next. The, this year, 2021, so as of today, PRC has already conducted and administered 24 licensure examinations. The examinations proceeded either because of quarantine qualification allows the conduct of examinations or the IATF with the recommendation of the OH and or the, with the permission of the LGUs where the examination is conducted, granted PRC an exemption. The examinations produced 16,110 new professionals, 13,685 of which are health professionals. Cognizant of the needs, uh, cognizant of the need of the new professionals, especially under the health and allied dis disciplines, PRC by practice request for exemptions and clearances so that we can administer and conduct the scheduled licensure examinations, notwithstanding the given restriction of the imposed community quarantine. PRC, however, is not always granted the request. And we understand that. Siyempre naman po, health muna, no, bago, bago ito. So uh, the slide uh, shows that some of the received communications, well, of course, the, the denying the, our request, well, I just want this to be highlighted and to be noted that PRC and the boards are always ready to conduct the scheduled examinations. Parati po namang ready kami. If, however, the IATF collectively or the LGU of the locality where an examination is to be given does not allow the conduct, then PRC has to subscri subscribe and follow. PRC... Now, to compensate for the examinations that were not allowed to proceed, have issued eight 
commission resolutions designating a total of 21 additional venues, specifically in areas with less restrictive quarantine quality classifications to make access uh, to our uh, licensure examinations more facilitative to all examinees throughout the country. This is on top of the rescheduling PRC does to cancel and or postpone examinations to the soonest possible schedule available. I will give, I would like to give an example to let, this is to highlight because of the large number of examinees, the let, and to comply with the established health protocols, the PRC issued resolution 1363 of 2021, dividing the examinees into four batches. And we have, uh, actually, ito minsanan, 174,000 kaseng examinees. So now we have, uh, with the uh, approval of the, and recommendation of uh, the Board of Teachers, yung four batches po would be this coming September 26. And again, may problema na naman po tayo dito. We will be awaiting for, for uh, instructions and directions from IATF, DOH, and LGUs. And the second batch will be in January. And then the third batch would be in March 27. Fourth will be in June 26, all in 2022. So, uh, so, uh, Meron po kaming mga, yung sinasabi po kanina, yung sa DepEd, yung mga provisional appointments ng teachers who are now allowed to take this September 26 examinations. Pinayagan po namin sila, maski late applicants po sila. So uh, again, sinasabi po namin, this September 26 will again depend on where, whether we will be allowed to, to uh, conduct the exam or not. So uh, another way forward for the commission and concerned professional regulatory boards is the consideration of virtual platforms in the conduct of, uh, of practical exams. Yung pong mga may practical face po yung iba na kung pwede, uh, online na lang, virtual, such as the uh, optometry, may mga engineering, engineering uh, professions po dyan, na may mga interviews, may mga oral exams, and also for dentistry. And we have also have been looking for a CBLE, com, uh, computer-based licensure examinations that we will already use for our examination nationwide. So all these are being undertaken po by the commission so that it could bring its services, particularly the conduct of the examinations closer to the public that it serves. So it, ito lang po yung aming update sa inyo on, on why we cannot uh, and why we cannot and we, why we do not conduct examinations in areas where we should. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, please submit your presentation to the committee. No. Alam ko pong uh, lunch time na, pero under the old normal uh, sa ating mga committee hearings, usually kami nagpo-provide ng uh, inyong lunch. But uh, uh, under the new normal, kanya kanya muna tayo. You can uh, eat din naman while are conducting our hearings. No? Regev, uh, ilang questions po for PRC? Ma'am, for ano lang to doon sa examination fees. No? Ilan po ang mga cancelled exams noong 2020 ang may paid examinees na? Yung pong, uh, I actually do not have the numbers now, pero po yung mga paid examinees, that will be used for their next examination. Hindi po sila magre-register ulit, hindi po sila magbabayad ulit, but they will have to inform us that what exam schedule they intend to take. Pero hindi na po sila magbabayad. Pero yung, yung nire-request niyo po, we will provide that uh, uh, po sa inyo. Yes, kasi... Uh... Ito yung ayon, ayon po doon sa annual audit report ng uh, Commission on Audit ng COA. There are 212,915 applications for licensure examinations uh, received uh, in the said year. Tama po ba ito? Magkano po ang total na examination fees ang naibayad na? If you, kung meron po kayong record. Ang, ang examination fee po kasi is 900, I understand. And uh, tama po, siguro yan kasi po, yung teachers na lang po, 172,000 na po eh. Mm -hmm. Yung uh, examinees for teachers. Then we have civil engineering, accountancy, criminology. Ang lalaki po ng mga, ng mga examinees uh, na natatala po sa mga profession na yeah. yan. 
Ma'am, pa, makabigyan nyo kami ng data about it. No? Pakisabit po sa ating uh, committee. At para naman ngayong uh, 2021, ilan sa mga cancelled exams ang may uh, paid examinees na? Ilan po ang lahat ng paid examinees para sa lahat ng exams ngayong 2021? Magkano po ang total na examination fees ang naibayad na sa PRC? For the record, para just in case lang po may tanong sa atin yan sa floor, alam po natin sa sagot yan. Do you have the data now? Uh, I don't have the data now. Uh, I don't know if our chairman has the data, but we will submit to you chairman? the Let me answer. Chairman. Mr. Chair, we don't have the data now, but we can... Uh, Just we provide us with the data. No? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Ito, may ba pang mga rates ang examination fee? So, balit magkano po ang pinaka-common na examination fee? Uh, tama, nabanggit nyo kanina, no? 900 pesos. Uh, yan, uh, yung bayad para sa practical exam. Tama, ito yung uh, nasa 400 more or less. At hindi po ba? Tama po ba yun? Tama po, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Tapos yung, uh, of course, yung examinees need to submit requirements prior to the uh, exam. Katulad ng transcript of records o TOR, birth certificate, uh, marriage contract, NBI clearance, at iba pa. Ano po ang range ng total expenses ng isang uh, examinee upang uh, makumpleto ang mga requirements na kailangan para sa kabalang exam? Considering all these expenses and the amount of time needed to obtain them, uh, makikita po natin na uh, pinaglalaanan talaga ng pera panahon itong licensure uh, examinations. Chairman? Uh, we don't have, yung mabibigay uh, ho namin siguro yung fees paid to the PRC, which is basically mga yung 900 po, 900 pesos per applicant. And then kung may practical, another 400. So, yun po yung basically fees for domestic examinations. Meron po kaming SPLE, yung sa overseas po, para sa overseas uh, professionals. Uh, yun po, uh, medyo mas mataas, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, mga uh, subject to verification po, uh, but I think it's just around 2,000. Piniagin ba? Nang, uh, you may continue? Go ahead. May datagdag pa kayo? Oh, wala na po. Well, pero yung SPLE po, hindi po natuloy. Hindi rin po, hindi natuloy noong uh, 2020, and, uh, 2020 and then ngayon, of course, 2021. Okay. Pinayagan ba ng PRC ang examinee na mag-refund ng kanyang binayad na exam fee kung sakaling nagbago ang kanyang isip o, at uh, hindi na niya ituloy ang pagkuha ng exam? Ano po ang ano nyo doon? Uh, well, well uh, wala po pa kaming, I'm, I'm not aware of any case na nag-refund po ko ang PRC. But okay. uh, alam ko po, eh, it can be used for us the subsequent exam. Dahil, uh, especially po, uh, if it was already remitted to the Treasury, yung, yung mga fees na po. Okay. On the average, magkano po ang ginagasos ng PRC para sa isang licensure exam bago magkaroon ng COVID-19? Uh, for small scale o yung may 1,000 examinees or less? Uh, magkano ang gastos for the medium scale exam o ang inyong may 1,001 hanggang sa 5,000 examinees? And for large uh, scale exam, eh yung may 5,000 o higit pang examinees. Magkano ang gastos to conduct this uh, exams? Uh, uh, depend, well, uh, depende po kung anong, yung, anong profession. Dahil uh, kung mas, uh, mas, mas maliit na, prof, uh, na professions, mas kukunting venue po. Pero definitely, ang cost of examina conducting examinations now at least doubled or tripled for some, in some cases dahil sa mga special protocols we have to follow. Uh, we have to add more locations, and in each location, we have to add more rooms dahil the requirements of social distancing. Uh, dati, on the average, uh, 24 can be accommodated in one classroom. Ngayon, walo na lang po. And at the same time, we have to add more proctors dahil uh, spread out among examinees. 
And uh, yun, yun po. Kaya at the very least, na-notice namin na at least twice or in some cases nagiging thrice ang cost ng conduct ng examinations. Okay. Uh, mayroon po bang uh, savings ang uh, PRC dahil sa mga cancelled exams noong uh, 2020? Magkano po ang savings ninyo and for for the year 2021? Magkano po ang expected uh, savings? Uh, well, uh, as of now po, I don't have those figures, but we can provide you po. Exactly. Yes, uh, we provide po ang ating office. No? Especially for 2020, dahil I understand na na-carry over na lang yun po uh, for 2021, yung savings na yun. Yan. Uh, okay. Uh, kaya ako tinatanong to just for the record para alam natin lahat yung sasagot natin just in case matanong sa atin sa floor, no? Yung saan na pupunta yung savings ng budget na hindi nagamit dahil sa cancelled exams. Ayan. Ito naman uh, on proposed uh, solutions, no? Dahil mahirap po ang paggawa ng schedule sa panahon ng pandemya na maaaring uh, magdeklara ng enhanced community quarantine o ECQ with short notice. Uh, what is your opinion and uh, position on some of the proposed measures to ensure the, the conduct of the exams? Uh, gawing uh, small scale uh, na lamang ang lahat ng uh, exams, mag-conduct ng exams per batch tulad ng uh, gagawin sa LEPT, uh, gawing per region or geographical cluster ang uh, batch ng mga exams para hindi na kailangan mag-cross-border ang mga examinees. Chairman? Mr. Mr. Chairman, can I just add my question para isang sagot na lang? Sige, sige, sige. Go ahead. Um, uh, uh, very specific yung question ko, but I'd like an answer for all the board exams. No, It's just that inabot ko last week when we were in the budget hearing yung announcement na makakancel yung... Um, uh, licensure exam for physicians and I was in contact with some deans of medical schools and they said na they were the part of those who petitioned for the um, rescheduling or cancellation however they never got any feedback and so two days before uh, so Mr. Chairman just for everyone's understanding the announcement was made on Thursday the exam was supposed to be on Saturday. So when I was clarifying with the med school deans na ano nangyari dito, alam nyo ba to, sabi nila, yes, they were part of the groups that um, requested for the, ano, the canceling or rescheduling. But they did not know na matutuloy kasi nga Thursday na, two days before the exam na, wala pa silang info. So they only got the info uh, along with everybody else, including the examinees, two days before the exam. So, can we get clarification on this? How do these things happen na two days before? Ako naranasan ko na na mag -e exam ako. One week before that, zombie mode ka na. You know, so to have to be told about these changes two days before, it's really difficult, no? Whether you're for the cancellation or you're not for the cancellation, I'm just saying that two days notice is a bit difficult, even for the teachers and the professors who are guiding their students, di ba? So paano ba nangyari ito na two days lang ang notice? And is it an issue with um, coordination with IATF? Because doon kami makakatulong, kaming mga legislators na sabihin din namin sa IATF, huwag yung bubitinin ng ganito yung mga to. If yun yung reason, I don't know what the reason is. I'm just trying to get clarity so that we can help you ensure that this does not happen. And I'm also told no, by the deans that I was in contact with um, that uh, walang, walang clarity as to when the next exam would be. So ang assumption is it would be the next one, which is next year. Eh, paano naman yung preparation ng, ng ibang mga estudyante na even the deans, from what I know, again, from what I know, mabilisan lang to. I was even in a um, budget hearing at that time. Uh, sana daw, ano lang, postponement lang within the year. Hindi yung mag-aantay pa ng the following year. So all of this was not clear to them. You all know more details than I, I do. I'm just relaying to you. Now, this was not clear to them. Pagkaganun ba yung specific profession? Should you not be in touch with the association of schools? Diba? So, kunyari, dentistry. Diba dapat in touch kayo sa mga college ng dentistry? Coordinating with them? Kasi I, get the, I got the feeling na 
well, in, hindi I got the feeling, I can read you the text na they did not know na matutuloy yung postponement and then wala silang info kung kailan yung next. So parang hindi na namin job yun eh, pero nagmagandang loob lang ako na alamin kung ano ba nangyayari. So yun lang Mr. Chairman, pwede pasagot natin. I'll be monitoring but I also have to be in another meeting but I can um, can keep on listening to the answers. Thank you very much po. Yes, Chairman Pilando, you're, you're, you're recognized. Thank you, you Madam Senator, for the opportunity to clarify on this. Uh, normally, ho, ngayong 2016, uh, we go to the IATF to get uh, approval of the examinations we are scheduled to undertake. And for the third quarter, which includes physicians, we got that approval before, uh, sometime last June, before the start of the third quarter. So... We already we already announced that the physician exam would push through for uh, this September. But again, uh, as the Commissioner Reyes mentioned earlier, we're dependent also on the uh, quarantine classifications. And uh, what happened here is that, uh, in fact, uh, it's public knowledge that as of uh, uh, before Tuesday of last week, we, the classification was even towards easening the, uh, uh, the quarantine classification to GCQ. So uh, we were ready to conduct the examination. But unfortunately, uh, uh, Tuesday evening, suddenly there was the extension of the uh, modified enhanced community quarantine. And uh, we, because of that, we sought the special dispensation of the regional IATF. And, we were, and uh, that was given on the 10th or uh, two days after, or two, and also two days before the examination. And unfortunately, the, uh, uh, the action of the regional IATF was to deny our request. So we had no choice but to announce the uh, cancellation at the time of the uh, uh, physician's examination for NCR. But for the rest of the country, we have to proceed because all the local government units and the regional IATF concern provided or uh, uh, consented to the conduct of the examinations. Unfortunately, the following day, there was also uh, the typhoon that was hitting northern Luzon and uh, with the uh, local ND RRMC actions to suspend uh, the uh, both government and private activities in Cagayan, we have also to cance our cancel and postpone the examination that was supposedly to be held in Cagayan. So that's what that's the sequence of events at that time. Unfortunately, it was too quick and it was maybe if there was any uh, uh, lapses in the communication process, we apologize for that. But we tried our very best to, uh, uh, well, we had the mandate to conduct the examinations, but at the same time, we are, we are constrained by the limitations uh, given by the uh, agencies that are, uh, re that are regulating the, uh, the uh, responses during the pandemic. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Uh, again, ulitin ko lang question ko kanina, no? Uh, what is your opinion on, and position on some of the proposed measures to ensure the conduct of the exams? Nagawing small scale na lamang sa lahat ng exams, mag-conduct ng exams per batch tulad ng gagawin ng LAPT, uh, going per region, geographical cluster, and batch ng mga exams para hindi na kailangan mag-cross-border uh, mga examinees. So, ano po yung uh, ano, sagot niyo po doon? We, uh, we're happy. In fact, we are, to a certain extent, we're already doing that. As much, uh, compared to nung normal uh, pre-pandemic days, mas marami na pong venue ngayon or locations ng examinations to lessen the travel requirement for exam both examine, examinees and examination personnel, and enduring strict quarantines to minimize the interzonal movements, uh, or movements from uh, stricter quarantine to uh, more uh, lenient quarantine. Okay. Uh, on uh, on uh, computerization of uh, exams, 
uh, with or without the COVID-19 pandemic, the ultimate goal of the PRC is uh, to computerize the professional licensure examinations as mandated by Republic Act Number 18981 or the PRC Modernization Act of 2000. Kahit nga nung uh, 1994 pa lamang ay nag-issue na si dating Pangulong Fidel Valdez Ramos ng uh, Executive Order Number 200 na naglalayang gawing uh, fully computerized ang lahat ng mga licensure examinations. For clarity po, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, when we refer to computerization, do we mean only using the, the computers instead of pen and paper? O kasama din po dito yung uh, online exams? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, the yan po ang isa sa mga, uh, well, uh, things that we are trying to determine now, kung anong extent ng scope ng computerization na pwede po. Uh, in fact, uh, we have to we have to we are we have to contend with the respective professional regulatory laws dahil may mga ipang mga batas diyan na mga profession na medyo very specific na may mga requirements sila na which is an impediment to uh, the uh, the computerization program that would be adopted and then uh, aside from that yung uh, choosing the right technology as well as the given the uh, nature of the examinations of each of the professional uh, boards, as well as the uh, privacy at saka security attendant to those uh, technology. Uh, yun po ang challenges namin. Uh, we try to have a common, a, a common parameter for all of these uh, professions. Uh, but at the same time, we are cognizant na baka later we have to contend with the uh, specific some specific features or or requirements of each of the professions now we have to customize as of now as of now meron po kami i mean uh, we uh, but uh, it's still uh, it's still in an inception stage uh, we have developed a a, a, a CBLE program we're in, maybe we can accommodate all. And then, ang problema lang namin, uh, since uh, that would also involve, that would involve cert, uh, significant resources, um, uh, which we might be difficult to get from government. So we're looking at uh, give, getting uh, pri private providers. And uh, yung, the process of getting a private provider, yun po ang uh, isang challenge was sa amin. On, since it's not covered by the procurement law, and at the same time, it's not also covered by the uh, PPP Act. So, yan po nga sanang gusto naming i-consult sa DOJ on how to proceed with a competitive selection process to be able to get a private provider. Okay, uh, the committee would appreciate uh, receiving your program and plan, uh, plan of action to actualize this uh, computerization. No, at para magkatulungan po tayo no? para ma-budgetan kung ano may dapat aksyonan. Okay, so ayon po sa uh, request uh, for information para sa computer-based uh, licensure examination system na nakapost sa website ng PRC for purposes of CBLE, uh, it is the manual administration of the licensure examinations that shall be migrated into a computer-based type of uh, examination, whether through local area network or online platform. Can you uh, expound on this, Mr. Chairman? Well, uh, uh, basically, po, uh, we sought the uh, comments of the industry, kaya we requested for information from kung, uh, ano yung, what's, what are the technologies available. And at the same time, uh, we. Uh, for this for these examinations, yun po kaya we requested for information. Uh, pero ang tinitingnan namin ngayon and upon consultation with our various professional regulatory boards, ang tinitingnan kasi nila would still be a intermediate step. Hindi pa yung examination anytime anywhere na supposedly which would if there's a computerization, baka pwedeng you can take the exam anytime, anywhere. Pero ang tinitingnan ngayon would be an interim step wherein there would still be a venue 
there would still be a scheduled examination date. Ang may iba lang would be from a pen and paper to a digital uh, cloud-based examination. Yun ang interim po. It seems that that's the phase na comfortable ang majority of the professional regulatory boards. Okay. Uh, what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of online exams? Mas makakatipid ba ang uh, PRC at ang gobyerno kapag ginawa natin itong online ang licensure exams? At paano naman po masisiguro ang integridad ng mga sagot ng mga examinees? Chairman? Well, uh, definitely po, siguro it, it, it is the administration of the examinations dahil uh, marami mga pro process na siguro we, have, we would be able to save from. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, yung bale yung uh, if it's become on, on the security part po yan po ang tinitingnan namin on how to assure the uh, integrity of the examinations with this te technology in innovations yun po po ang aming kinukonsulta with the uh, supposed uh, experts and then with the industry on how to uh, ensure the integrity of the examinations Okay. Um, on budget for computerization of exams, no. Uh, for the past six years, th there is a, uh, a line item uh, in the annual budget uh, of, of the PRC under General Appropriations Act that is called the Computerization of Licensure Examination Processes and Regulation Services. What is the purpose and uh, coverage of this fund, Chairman? Well, itong existing computerization po namin, eh, we've been computerizing also our processes. Yung, for instance, yung application for examinations, yung renewal ng mga licenses, and uh, include even CPD application. Ngayon, uh, we, uh, we have, uh, we're migrating to, uh, towards an online platform. Uh, maski ngayon, yung taking ngayon, online na rin, mga ganun po. And at the same time, we are also enhancing our database para in, in uh, we have a, well, a, a data bank, I mean, uh, uh, for which would further facilitate eventual uh, computerization, the eventual computerization of the commission. Hindi lang sa, uh, and hindi lang sa examination. Kasama po ba ang CBLA dito? At uh, anong taon ang nagsimulang uh, makatanggap ang PRC ng pondo sa ilalim ng line item na ito? Tuloy-tuloy ba ang allocation para sa item na ito, Chairman? I'm not so sure, uh, Mr. Chair, kung yung, uh, on, kung yung the inception of that line item sa budget. Uh, but I suppose ma uh, siguro uh, it was there before dahil nga it was a PRC moder modernization law. Eh, so... I, I believe the Department of Budget provided that item. Pero basically, hindi pa po yan sa examinations uh, because it's only now that we are working on the computerization of the examinations. Although I understand that there was a time nung when, uh, I think, mga 10 years ago, when there was the, uh, but for just for us, uh, just one profession, I think that's the, uh, for the maritime, we're in uh, uh, no, for metallurgical engineering, which is a very small board, we're in examinees can uh, come in and take the exam uh, in one location at that time in the head office and take uh, and uh, take the exam. And that's basically yun ang testing sana for computer computer based examination. Okay. Uh... For the year 2021, po, uh, this item is uh, allocated uh, 114 million 141,000, the largest allocation by far. Uh, dahil uh, bago dito, no, 58 million ang pinakamalaking inilaan para dito. Maari po ba niyo kami bigyan ng information tungkol dito, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we'll provide you the details of the okay. projects and programs under that. All right. Okay, under Section 10, 
of Republic Act Number no. One One Four Nine Four or the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act, two point five million was uh, allocated to PRC for its uh, computer-based uh, licensure examination. Na release na po ba ang budget na ito, Chairman? At uh, yes, Mr. Chair, yan yung seed fund to for us to come up with the consultation and the hiring of consultant for the CBLE. Okay. In the long run, uh, will the computerized, uh, yeah, instead of pen and paper, uh, test be more uh, economical for PRC and the government than the traditional pen and paper test? Oh, uh, ano naman po magiging epekto nito sa examination fees na babayaran ng ating mga kababayan? Mas uh, mapapamahal po ba ito o mas mapapamura tayo? Well, uh, uh, well, kung, we, kung ngayon po kasi, kung hindi, if it, it will not be funded by government, yung migration to a computer-based. Baka, mer, and we have to engage a third party, a private provider. The private provider would most probably require a convenience fee for providing the technology or for providing that services. Uh, gaya po ngayon, I understand sa yung bar exams po ngayon, uh, although I don't know exactly kung paano po yung, pag, yung uh, sharing ng cost, pero I understand that they are, uh, they have appointed a private provider to assist them in the conduct of the exams. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Chairman. For APOs, IPOs, academe, no? professionals, examinees, sa uh, ano po ang mga epekto monetary and otherwise ng cancellations and rescheduling ng mga licensure exams sa, sa, sa mga examinees at kanilang profession profession sector or industry sino uh, siguro pwede natin tanungin yung uh, ng ating mga teachers yung sa uh, pagitas ng yung kamay Ano, ano pangalan? Sa so, ACT. ACT. Representative ng ACT, please. Uh, you're, you're now recognized. Nakibigay ngayon pangalan. Andiyan ba? Just for the record, para alam lang natin yung mga ano nila. ACT. Representative ng mga teachers or nurses. Ah, wala. Mukhang nagutom na. Kumain. <laughs> okay, pag-submit na lang, no? Yung mga uh, yung comment nila regarding this. So, di, sa TWG na lang din, ano? Para mas mabilis tayo, meron pa tayong isang. So, ayan. Ano pa? Wala na po bang uh, katanungan? Kung, kung wala na, pakisubmit na lang inyong position papers at then of course, yung inyong statements and, uh, at, uh, para mabilis tayo so we can proceed to our next agenda. So wala na pong sum... sino po yung nasa Burakay? Naka-face mask. <laughs> Ayan, wala na? Wala po. For GSIS, we have Ah, for GSIS pala si Attorney. Uh, okay. So, okay. Let's now proceed to our next agenda. Para, ano, para mabilis na lang tayo, no? So, alam kong gutom na kayo, mga... Baka, ako, naduduling na dito, eh. Pero, okay lang. Overtime tayo, overtime. Okay, for the third, uh, third part of today's hearing, uh, we will uh, discuss the bills proposing to augment the benefits for solicitors uh, of the Office of the Solicitor uh, General. Uh, three senators filed bills uh, of this nature. No? House Bill Number 10007, which was approved by the House of Representatives on, on, this, uh, uh, on third reading on September 6, was also referred to this committee. No? Comsec, pakibasa po ang uh, titles ng mga bills uh, for the record. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. 
you have the following bills. Paki off Check lang yung bill number. From sec. Yes, sir. Okay. Senate bill number one one. Nag-echo ka pa rin? Ito yes, sir. May co-host kaya. Senate tayo. bill number one one eight zero. An act augmenting the employee benefits for the solicitors of the Office of the Solicitor General by providing retirement, death, and survivorship benefits and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Ramon Bong Revilla, Jr. Two, Senate Bill Number 1175, an act augmenting the benefits of the solicitors of the Office of the Solicitor General and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Mani Pacquiao. Third, Senate Bill Number 1277, an act augmenting the employee benefits for the solicitors of the Office of the Solicitor General by providing retirement, death, and survivorship benefits and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa. And lastly, House Bill Number 10007, an act augmenting the retirement, death, and survivorship benefits of the Solicitor General Assistant Solicitors General, Senior State Solicitors, and State Solicitors of the Office of the Solicitor General and Appropriating Funds, therefore, introduced by Representatives Revilla Omanal, C. Alvarado, et al. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This bills. Okay. Okay. Narinig ba kanina? Okay, thank Okay lang, we just continue. Okay. Ulitin ko na lang. Okay. Unlike the OSG bill during the 17th Congress, this bill deals solely with the retirement, death, and uh, survivorship uh, benefits of the solicitors of, of the OSG. And this aspect was not objected objected to by uh, the Department of Justice and the uh, Department of Budget and Management, BBM, in the previous Congress. Uh, as legal defender of the government who are conferred with the judicial rank, tama lamang na mabigyan ang ating mga solicitors ng mga benepisyo na, makakuha, na makukuha nila pagkatapos ng kanilang tapat na pagsisilbi sa gobyerno. The officials in the Justice Department, the, the, the National uh, Prosecution Office, Public Attorney's Office, and Ombudsman enjoy uh, retirement, death, and uh, uh, survivorship uh, benefits pursuant to their special laws. The solicitors of the OSG do not at all receive said benefits enjoyed by their counterparts in other government agencies despite the fact that they perform work of equal value. Nice po natin punan ang uh, kakulangan na ito at sana ay uh, magawa natin ito sa lalong madaling panahon. Sa punto pong ito ay marapat na bigyan natin muna ng pagkakataon ng mga resource person natin mula sa OSG upang uh, magbigay ng pahayag o kung meron silang uh, maikling uh, presentasyon upang mas maunawaan natin ang uh, kanilang kalagayan at ang uh, magiging epekto ng mga panukalang batas na ito sa kanilang uh, ahensya. I, I now uh, recognize uh, uh, from OSG, of course, uh, uh, Solicitor General uh, Jose Calida. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> My esteemed friends, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, of the Committee on Civil Service, uh, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla, Senator Sherwin Wynn Gachalian, Senator Juan Miguel Miggs Subiri, Senator Amy Marcos, and <clears throat> Senator Pia Cayetano. Good afternoon. The Office of the Solicitor General acts as the legal defender of the Republic and Tribune of the People. As you know very well now, this mandate includes representing the Congress in significant cases filed against 
this august institution. To name a certain few, the OSG represents Congress in the petitions filed against the constitutionality of Anti-Terrorism Act and in the martial law proclamation and extension cases. <clears throat> Recently, on March 3, 2021, in the case of NLEX versus Government of the Republic of the Philippines, a tall regulatory board, the OSG successfully defended the Republic and the claim of seven billion five hundred sixty six million three hundred thousand against the government was dismissed. This is the first case in our history that the OSG defended the Republic in an international arbitration case without foreign counsel, saving the government counsel fees of approximately four million dollars or around <coughs> Philippine peso 199 uh, million 574,000. The work that our OSG lawyers do in fulfillment of this mandate is likewise no secret to this committee to serve with independence, integrity, and highest competence, to serve beyond work hours at the cost of time for oneself and family, to be ready at a moment's notice to go above and beyond the call of duty para sa bayan. Our lawyers in the OSG have always given and will continue to give the very best of what <clears throat> they have to offer in the service of the nation. I know these solicitors, your honors. I have worked with them day and night. I have worked with them in small and big cases. I have met all of them and had the occasion to discuss some of their case assignments. I have personally seen their dedication and love for the law and public service. Such patriotism is beyond cavil. The OSG would not want to lose its solicitors. We have intensely and vigorously served the Republic to the private sector or other branches of the government because of neglect or refusal to secure their future and those of their families. In this light, we respectfully seek the augmentation of the benefits received by state solicitors Assistant Solicitors General and the Solicitor General through an act providing for their retirement, death, and survivorship benefits. It is just only that an OSG lawyer be in his or her twilight years amply secured by our government for having given the country their best years of life and learning. And in the unfortunate event that an ASG lawyer dies in the service, a helping hand, a financial assurance, so to speak, be extended by the state to those they leave behind. A case in point is former Assistant Solicitor General Nestor Baliasilio, who was killed in the line of service in relation to his handling of government cases. Incidentally, the OSG had to deal with high turnover rate for solicitors, eventually leaving for other offices with better retirement, death and survivorship benefits. Specifically, since the time the disparity in benefits had occurred in 2013, our separation rate has more than doubled. That is, from a separation rate of 7% prior to 2013 to a staggering 17% from 2013 to 2020. The OSG is only as good 
as the sum of its parts. And the benefits we seek, if we put in place, would be an incentive for lawyers who join the OSG to stay for good. The OSG contributes to the national coffers, but more than that, just like faithful soldiers, our OSG lawyers are in the battlefront defending the government's cause every single day. It is a badge of honor for the OSG, regardless of the inferior benefits its lawyers enjoy. It is fervently hoped that through the enactment of this bill, our valiant lawyers who have given their best years in OSG will get the above stated benefits when they reach their twilight years. What the OSG asks for finds a basis in justice and parity. Justice such that all may get their due and parity in the light of the benefits we seek are now currently being enjoyed by the OSG's contemporaries, to name some, the National Prosecution Service, the Office of the Ombudsman, and the Public Attorney's Office. In fact, the OSG is asking even less, as we were not asking for retroactivity, unlike the, that granted in RA number 11059 for the Office of the Ombudsman. What we ask for is not novel, only that the same spectrum of benefits accorded to other lawyers in the government service be extended to the lawyers of the OSG. We urge you, Your Honor, we urge you, Your Honor, to seize this opportunity to help us pass this important piece of legislation. Your Honor, our lawyers give their all for flag and country. They are no less deserving of this. Thank you very much. Thank you Mr. very much. Thank you very much, uh, Soljan, Kalida. Don't worry. And uh, uh, itong aking uh, partner, si ang ating majority floor leader, uh, tutulong din sa inyo dyan, for sure. Yes. Uh, I now recognize Senator Subiri. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I would just like to greet uh, my dear friend, uh, Soljan Joe Kalida. A pleasant good morning. He had me at hello. He had me at hello. No need to campaign for your bill, uh, Soljan, because uh, you are absolutely correct. The men and women of the Solicitor General's office are indeed uh, great men and women of government doing their job to help our government move forward. And uh, I am totally in favor of the survivorship and other benefits that they are clamoring for. Uh, ako'y naniniwala na talagang pag naibigay po natin ito, Chairman, lalong gaganda ang trabaho nila, lalong lalakas loob nila, depensa ng ating gobyerno sa iba't ibang kaso. At uh, talagang kailangan po nila. Alam mo, nawawala yung mga na napakagaling natin mga abogado sa gobyerno sa private practice dahil nga po uh, sa kakulangan na binibigay natin na beneficyo sa kanila. So, Soljan, you had me at hello. Uh, this bill is going to be a priority measure as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Mr. Chairman, ilabas mo na yung committee report para ma-sponsor na natin kaagad agad itong measure and hopefully... No, bago magpasko ay uh, may bigay natin yan as pasko sa kanila, uh, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat po. Ayan, okay, uh, Soljan. Thank you, natin. thank you. I just have uh, ano few, few few questions lang ano uh, for the record. Okay, uh, Soljan, the bill filed in in the 17th Congress sets same uh, requirements and qualifications for the Solicitor General and other uh, solicitors. Uh, the bills we are discussing now allow the Solicitor General to enjoy the benefits even if he or she has just served three consecutive years as Soljan. Uh, Soljan Kalida, you will benefit from this measure, tam uh, Tama po ba? Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. And 
Yes, okay. Are, are there similar perks given to the head of the other judicial agencies, ombudsman, PAU, etc.? From what I know, Your Honor, they have better, uh, <clears throat> uh, unlike us. So they they have more money than us, Your Honor. <laughs> Okay, wala na tayong tatanong dito eh, no? Uh, okay, so siguro, Soljen, eh, antayin nyo na lang yung konting panahon at uh, nandiyan si Senator Subiri at uh, yung mga ibang uh, kasama natin sa Senado at kami naniniwala po sa inyo. We believe so, in you. Tulungan natin sila, Chairman. Tulungan natin sila. Yes, but, yes, uh, yes. I, if, if you will allow me to make the motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve this on committee level para gawin na natin ang committee. Oh, sige. Okay. Salamat, Chairman, ha? Okay. So, all right. Maraming salamat. Good to see you, uh, Sir Joe. Okay. At uh, ayan, Soljen, eh? so don't worry. At uh, kami na pong bahala dito sa Senado. Thank you. At uh, maraming okay. salamat sa inyo. Thanks for the time. Uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong mga contributions sa ating uh, discussions. The committee will be expecting uh, the submissions of the data and documents that will further help us in uh, studying these bills. And to be able to come up with a uh, comprehensive measure that will uh, capture all the concerns raised in this hearing today, the committee will be continue to coordinate with your office for the preparation of a uh, substitute bill and uh, may constitute a technical working group to discuss the details of the same. So we have extensively uh, discussed the bills in our agenda today. Kaya ang aming pong uh, taus-pusong pasasalamat po sa inyong lahat, sa ating mga resource persons. And of course, of course, Soljen Kalida, uh, kay Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, ayan, at uh, ilang oras na tayo, alam pong gutom na kayo. Uh, kay la Senator Migs, thank you Senator Migs, partner, thank you. Kay Senator Pia, kay la Senator Aimee. Uh, Senator Wynn, no, uh, ayan, and the hearing is now, uh, is hereby uh, adjourned. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you all.